Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. You don't hear it at all? Uh oh. You hear it now? Because it came behind. Hold on, one more time. I know you heard it because it's coming through here. Uh, <laughs> Right here. Well, it's working. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you guys doing today? How was yesterday? It was good. It was good. It was good. You know, it's interesting. People will fill in a little while. That's what happens. There are some people hanging out late last night. I wasn't one of them. No, but uh, we're excited today. We have some great surprises for you. Um, yesterday, we took care of testimonies, which are phenomenal, and they were great. Um, one thing I will say about this, there are people all around who are watching you or who are listening to you. You know, people watched the whole thing yesterday. Some people watched bits and pieces, but it's one of the best things that you can use to share with folks so they can learn about UIGI and partner with you at UIGI. But today, um, we're going to have some, this is going to be real cool, what you're going to see, from, what you're going to hear from today, you're going to learn a lot. But without further ado, I'm about to bring to the stage one of my good friends, um, phenomenal moderator, ring earner himself. He's going to go over one of our phases, and we'll do little snippets about our phases today, not all, but just some, um, to help people understand what we bring to the table with the phase that we found. So put your hands together for my good friend, Mr. Jason Motley. We on the time schedule. Okay, we got so much. This is important. <laughs> really? Hey, Hello. Really quickly, um, you know, I know we interrupted some stuff, but you did a lot for UIGI, us as moderators, and Sherry, if you could come up too, please, really quickly. We just, uh, we just wanted to show our appreciation to both you and Sherry for you know what you've done for this group and um, put an opportunity out there for 50,000 plus people, ladies and gentlemen, that are able to get things done financially. And we just wanted to say thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I got this one. Oh, or is this one not working now? Good. This one. 
You can. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Great. So my name is Jason Motley. Let me get back here a little bit. I'm gonna be showing y'all a little bit about roll queue and copy pro traders. So roll queue and copy pro, they are both very similar in what they do, but very different in how they do it. Royal Q, the trading is done by AI, where CPT is done by a live person. Now, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, there is a steeper learning curve with Royal Q. But with uh, CPT, it is also very easy. It's kind of a set it and forget it type thing. Um, Royal Q, in my opinion, ultimately you get higher returns, um, more functionality. And for both of them, your money is safe, it never leaves your wallet. We've all been there when something fails and we're like, well, where, where's my money? Um, this one, if it fails, your money's still in your wallet. It's two of the safest phases that we have. Um, for the price, Roll Q is 120 USDT per year. Um, it was 100 when we first started. They've since raised the price to 120. Um, CPT is $100 in Bitcoin per month. Um, when I did my comparison between the two, what I noticed was while CPT outperformed Royal Q by a very small margin, you made more with Royal Q because you didn't have to pay the extra $100. That I think World, uh, CPT outperformed World Q by about fifteen dollars. Except for audio-wise, your beard and the microphone. Oh, don't. How about I put it in my microphone? Put it in your beard. In my beard. Is that a, is that better? All right, so while uh, CPT did outperform them, I've made more with Royal Q uh, than CPT simply because I did not have to pay that $100 a month. And we all know it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. Now, Royal Q, it's, uh, from what I've seen, it's only available via an app, iPhone, Android and CPT is only available via your browser. Um, that can influence some people's decisions in what they're gonna do. So the setup for Royal Q. If you look here, this is what you'll get when you first log in, and that is cut off. But where I have the red circle, Wow, this is very sensitive. We have the red circle right here. This is your assets. You click on here, you're gonna go and deposit uh, your 120. Once it's deposited, you click up here uh, where it says renew for me, that would say activate, bam, you're good. And API binding, that seems to be giving a lot of people the issues. There, that's this is where you would come to do your API binding. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. To select a circle. Now, personally, the circle I use right now is called QQ or Q squared. And they, at the time I picked them, they were number one, uh, doing outrageous percentages like 25,000%, uh, cumulative, cumulative. And the way it works to pick a circle, click this icon right down here on the bottom. That'll bring you over to this page. 
Now, if you have us, if you have one in mind that you want to join, simply type it in the search bar. Bam, you'll find them. Um, if you want to find who the number one is, click this little bar graph over here at the top. That is uh, that will show you the different ones. So this one. Uh, this was AI bot, and what you'll see, if you look right here, you can switch between profit-wise, as in the amount of money made, versus percentage-wise, who made the most via percentage. If you look at this via percentage, I believe Q squared was number three. Um, also, you have a couple of buttons up here. This is, I cannot read the, the middle one, the hot list, I believe it's called. You see QQ circle is number one there. If you wanna pick one, you simply click it, it'll take you to their page and you follow the setup procedure. One thing to take in mind uh, to maximize everything that you can do with Royal Q, um, and I found this out the hard way. Uh, try to pick a group or a circle that has a telegram group and that has active members. With QQ or Q squared, this is off of their this is off of their Telegram group right here. This tells you they on their Telegram group they will give you the precise instructions on how to set it up. My team was always coming to me asking, well, what do I put for the opening? What do I uh, put? How many coins should I trade? And I'm like, that's up to you because the group I was a part of never gave this information. So I didn't know how to go about that. And nobody was answering my questions to figure it out. Once I found Q squared, this whole thing within them, I was like, oh, wow. So if you have, um, if you start with, what's that, $75? Or I'm sorry, that's $700. Uh, they want you to trade one coin at $15 a piece. What this does, and I know some of you in here have gotten this error message where it tell you that it couldn't cover the funding. That's, this will stop you from getting that error message. And it goes all the way down to 9,000 where you can do 20 coins at, I think that's 30, $25 a piece, $30 a piece. And I think I had mine originally set up. I had, $50 to start, 100 coins, and I only had $1,000 in there. So I was getting that error message all the time because I couldn't cover certain things. I couldn't cover the margin calls. This makes sure that you do not get that message and make sure that you can actually see that cumulative result of 25,000, uh, 25,000%. And so here, it shows um, first buy-in 15, number strategy six. That's for where I am at having $1,300 in there right now. Uh, that's right here. 13, 50, 15, uh, and six coins. Now, since I've set that back up, just as they show here, and I did that two days ago, I'm already showing a profit. For a good month, my Royal Q was stale. It was, I would watch my coins drop. Some of them would come in. I get a couple of new uh, sales. But since I've changed this, my phone has been going like this every time I get a, uh, a new sale. So definitely when you do that, you want to find one that has a Telegram group and an active community so you can fi uh, figure it out with them. Now, for me, this is the this is uh, Q Squared Telegram group. You see, they have different sections in there to show you exactly how to get everything set up. Um, it's just extremely important to do so, in my opinion. Now, I know a lot of you use Binance. Personally, I couldn't get them to work, so I use Hoibi for the API. 
you when you go into Hoibi, well, to want to make the most of Hoibi, uh, right over here under your amount, you're going to see a, um, it's going to say P&L. You click that, get it set up as soon as you get Hoibi set up, and bam. This is something that shows right here, along with right here. These are weeks. So you see, even with when I was messing up, um, I was making profit every day for the, your API. You want to come down here. This is your home screen in Hoibi. You can't really see it because it's cut off a bit, but over here, there's a face. You would click there, click general and API management, fill that uh, from there, would fill you up, uh, fill everything out. Copy pro traders, a whole lot simpler. So when you first log in, you'll see this up here. Everything that you do for the most part is gonna be under my dashboard. Once you get to my dashboard, you come to exchange settings, which is gonna look like this. Now, this is how I personally have my personal setup for um, CPT. I use Kraken, $60 a trade. I chose Carlos, Carlo Cruz. He does a lot of trades. Um, you, if, you only, if you have less than 5,000, I wouldn't do more than 60 or $70 per trade. And down here is just an example of some of his trades. Just a little quick example. Over here is your, the API settings that you would get from Kraken. I believe that is it. Let me, uh, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Trying to. All right, and so here's, a, this is important because some of y'all have better eyes than me, I'm sure. So everything that Jason just went over is going to be in video style in the Facebook group, all right? So that, and it'll be step-by-step step in the Facebook group. So today was not, we want to make sure today, again, I didn't really want to do a lot of training, but there are people who have questions about these platforms in particular, especially Royal Q. And so this will be in the Facebook group, everything you just went over, the exact PowerPoint, step-by-step, step, and it'll be there by Tuesday. Cool? Wonderful. All right. And so... Next thing we're going to do, we're going to bring up uh, a panel of ladies, and um, they're going to, I'm not even going to tell you what they're going to do, but um, we have the, the UIGI ladies, and I mean, everybody in here who's a lady is a UIGI lady, but it's some people we picked in particular, just to hear their experiences about maybe the industry, home life, UIGI, how everything matches up together, children's lives, so on and so forth, because we're all, we're all advancing on many levels. And it's always good to hear how other people are figuring it out. Does that make sense? And so if you wouldn't mind, stand to your feet and give it up to the UIG ladies. Let's give them a real big hand. Microphone? You have a microphone? Jason, Monique. enough seats Red? Well, I mean, can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, get myself situated. How y'all doing this morning? Looking lovely, of course. So this is gonna be a very just real impromptu, informal just conversation. We're gonna spill the tea, so to speak. Okay. Um, I'm very honored to be able to be on this stage with some phenomenal women, not in your own right individually, 
but collectively, this is a this is a game changer. So I'm really excited to be a part of this process. So we're gonna just uh, chit chat and answer some questions, and we're gonna go from there. All right. I'm a note taker, so if y'all like write some, you know, say some things, I might write it down for my own purposes. <laughs> so don't mind the the, the writing. <laughs> All right, um, so let's see, we have Sharon over there from, we're gonna go from left to right. Sharon, Judah, Sherry, Rochelle, Susan, and last was not Magda, right? So I wanna make sure I said it correctly, good. I hate messing people's names up. So just, I want you guys just kind of just tell me a little bit about yourselves um, and talk, talk, talk to the people out there. So we'll start with Sharon. Um. Microphone, please. Yes, microphone check. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. You guys look lovely. UIGI is looking right on y'all. Um, my name is Sharon Givens. Uh, I am originally from Buffalo, New York. I've been in Jersey for God knows how long. Um, I'm an educator. Uh, I teach all boys. Thank God. No more girls. Uh, and uh, this has just been an amazing experience for me so far, and I'm ready to share my experiences with you. So, brief. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. As Sharon said, you guys are looking fabulous. My name is Judith Olivero, but my friends call me Judy. So since you all are my friends, Judy is the name. Um, I'm a single parent. I have three children. Uh, my background is administrative assistant. Uh, right now, I'm literally the gatekeeper of my high school. I work for the Department of Education in New York City, uh, preferably the Bronx, New York. <laughs> and, um, you know, I started this industry about 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago. Um, and I'm finally, I feel like I've met my, or moved into my new home, should I say, with UIGI. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sherry Gary. I am a domestic engineer, but by trade, I was a finance and account specialist. Uh, I am also the wife of Rabu Gary, and we have been in network marketing and the people business for 20 plus years now. Awesome. Good morning. I'm Rochelle Hazel. Um, now I live in Georgia, but from Baltimore. Um, wife of almost 27 years, uh, boy mom, three boys, two grandsons, all boys around the queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all think that they are the boss of me. Um, and serial entrepreneur, um, majorly in the mortgage note space, as some of you may know, um, found, of course, UIGI, I told you all yesterday, early this year, and it has definitely been a game changer. Um, so super happy to be here and up here with all these other queens. <laughs> I'm Susan Gellert. So I am the lone Canadian. Um, I'm a mom of six, three that I had and three I collected along the way. Um, I also, I work as a social worker three days a week and I cut custom metal the other days. So um, UIGI allowed me to also let go of another business that I owned. I was a publisher of a magazine. So I've always been trying to find something, right? Like one job was never quite enough. I needed to do something else, something else, something else. And I've tried um, affiliate marketing since I was in my early twenties. I sold a lot of soap, sold a lot of other things. And again, same as everybody else, I feel like I finally found the spot where I belong. So I'm really excited to be here with everybody and thank you for including me. Okay, good morning. My name is Magda and I'm from LA. I have two kids, two girls, uh, 10 and 13. I've been in insurance fashion industry the last 25 years or so alone, trying different things that I could do from home. And now I'm with UIGI and I'm loving it. Thank you. You guys hold the mics. Oh. <laughs> I got the <laughs> All right, so um, Judy, you talked about um, being in an industry for a while, right? And trying to find something that makes sense for you that fits for what your, what your goal is. For you, what was that goal for you when you first started and how has it changed now? Honestly, my goal was to be financially free. Um, I was on the right track. I just didn't have the right vehicle. 
and um oh sorry i didn't did you guys hear me when I, said <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the right vehicle but um just striving to uh, get to that point uh, was a challenge initially like i said um i had a little fun in the beginning um then it became very hard um, because I had to keep motivating and we all know how it is to keep people motivated. Um, so then it became not fun anymore. Um, so I took a little hiatus, as I said last night. Um, I knew there was something more out there. I just didn't know what it was. And again, looking through Facebook randomly, like I prayed on it first, uh, actually for several years. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm hearing that this investing thing, this investing thing is what everybody's doing. Um, so I knew I needed to be a part of this investing. My nephew introduced me, didn't make any money, you know, with that company. Um, and then I saw Rabu, Rabu's post, um, particularly, and I had to call him up. And I was like, listen, I want to be a part of this. Like, what do I need to do? I didn't ask any questions. Why? Because I knew who he was. So if I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing, but I did it on the strength of knowing his personality and he and his wife. And um, I wanted to be a part of it because whatever he touched, I'm sorry, whatever Rabu touches turns to gold. If you guys don't know that already. Um, and I wanted to be a part of that. Didn't want to miss the boat. And the rest is history. I, I think you guys all know that because that's why we're here. Um, and I feel like I found like the home slash vehicle. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Susan, this question has to be for you. You talked about, you know, your um, collection of children plus the ones that you had, right? For you, you know, in terms of what you've experienced in this industry, what are some things that you have learned along the way about yourself? And then how has those lessons really impacted the people around you, the people that are closest to you? I think one of the biggest things I learned about myself is that I need and want to be surrounded by people who are striving for more. I really, really struggle when I get in a stagnant environment where people are negative and aren't moving. And I think that's the one thing I've always loved about the MLM industry is that people are excited. They have a goal and they have something that they're working towards. And when people have a goal and are excited, they're just more fun to be around. And, and I think like <laughs> a rising tide raises all ships. And I, I think I said that in the group one day, because I feel like when everybody works together, things, things move forward. And, and it makes me a better person. My, um, my family notices, and I've talked to them a million times about you become who you associate with. So my kids hear that over and over. And even my husband, sometimes when he comes home, you know, negative, I'll say, you know, you need to associate with people who are going somewhere, doing something excited about life, because then you become better. And I think that's the biggest thing it's taught me is that I have to mind where I am and what space I'm in, because I need to create that positive in my brain. Makes sense. Awesome. All right. The next question is for Sharon. Sharon is one of our seasoned queens on the, on the uh, panel. So my question for you is, you know, if you could go back and talk to your 18 year old self, what would that, what would be something you would tell your 18 year old self would be present now? Never be afraid to take any risks. Um, I, I've, I've taken risks pretty much all my life. Um, when I, when I was in college and I didn't, you know, I didn't have a compass. I didn't know what I was doing. I was, you know, first generation in my family, my immediate family going to college. And I really didn't have a lot of guidance. My, my father died while I was in college. My mom was going through, you know, her stuff that she was going through. And what Susan said about associating yourself with people I had a core group of friends. I played basketball for one year in college. And then I knew that, uh, you know, um, it wasn't, it, you know, I love basketball. So, you know, I started a, I started an intramurals uh, team uh, group in, in, in uh, college uh, because traveling on the college team and you got exams and, you know, after, you know, the next morning, you know, uh, it was a little tough. So I didn't, I didn't want to do that anymore. But anyway, um, I had a good core of people that I'm still in touch with that are doing things, you know. Um, but when I got out of school, I didn't know where I was going. 
friend of mine and I said junior year, if we didn't know what we were going to do, we were just going to get in a car and drive cross country. And that's what we did. Um, we worked really hard during the summers. And, you know, that was before ATMs or anything. It was all about Western Union. Hey, mom, we're going to be at, in St. Louis. We're going to be in whatever. You know, we're going to send some money there. And we were on the road for two and a half months and just drove and camped out and just hung out and visited people all over the country. Settled in California and um, I didn't take a job job. All my friends that had job jobs all through college, I never, I said I didn't want anybody to put a dollar sign on my head. So I did a straight commission job. Man, I was done by one o'clock and made more money than anybody in my circle that wasn't doing what I was doing. My 18 year old self, what I would tell you, don't get that first job, job, that's gonna put a dollar sign because it makes you lazy. It takes away your fire. And when you become dependent on that paycheck, it's, sort of, it's, it, it's, a, it's a dependency that you have to, it's an addiction. addiction. <laughs> that you really have to break free th from. And I, I am so thankful that that spark that I always had for, from when I was a kid, opportunity, take it. Opportunity, don't let it pass you by. And when Rabu came into my life back in 2015, there was something about that kid. And I, I affectionately call him kiddo. <laughs> There's something about him as Judith said, that wants to make you align yourself with his thought processes. He's one of the only ones that could check me <laughs> on a regular, and I don't take, you know, offense is my voluntary thing to do, but I don't take offense. I know he has my best interest at heart. And I would say to any of you, as I would say to my 18 year old self, get your ego put it in your back pocket and just grab hold of life. Don't be afraid to fail. Understand that there are lessons in failure. Just try not to fail the same way two or three times. But if you do, figure out what you could learn from the failure. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna kind of follow up with something, so I'm gonna give the, give the mic to Sherry real quick. Um, this is something I Rabu kind of touched bases on a lot of times when he talks about, you know, every misstep is a step in the direction you're supposed to go into, right? And, you know, from what Rabu has shared with people in his circle about, you know, his own experiences through um, network marketing, the ups and downs and him wanting to be that person to help everybody, right? you sherry as that other half of rabu right i call the better half so to speak you know what i mean how do you find that balance of when it's not when it wasn't you know when you hate that when you went from seven figures to barely two figures you know what does that look like for you for as a mom you know holding down your family how did you kind of manage that and maneuver in that space first i'll say that's an awesome question <laughs> um I would have to really think about that and say that even though he wasn't making the money that he wanted to make, he never not saw the future. Like he was, he would always, he would be encouraging to me. So I had no choice but to be encouraging to our girls, be inspirational to our girls. Like they never saw hardship. Even if we thought we were having hardship, we never, um, allowed our girls to see it. So that kept me motivated. That kept me going because Rabu always kept a positive attitude, whether we were making a million dollars or whether we were making a thousand dollars in the business. Um, there were some lean times, but I can honestly say that even in the lean times, he kept the same attitude, which made it easier for me, even though I know he probably was like, oh, Sherry is giving me such a hard time, because <laughs> I probably was. That was your job. <laughs> but, <laughs> I probably was, but I, um, I always, I have a, um, a strong sense of discernment. So when I know that something is not right or is not going in his favor, I'm always like pulling his coattail, like we need to do something else or you need to move yourself from around these people and you need to advance and do this, or you need to advance and do that. And he knows it as well, but for him, it takes a little, long, a long, a little longer to see because he's a people person. Right. 
He's a people person. He genuinely loves people and he genuinely wants to see everyone around him succeed. Gotcha. So awesome. awesome. Thank you for sharing that. All right, next question is for uh, Rochelle. So you are a, a son mom, just like I am. I have two beautiful bookends. <laughs> uh, my baby's not doing Kamal and I love them to death. And I, for me, it's always been about um, what things have I instilled in them from when they were younger and how are they implementing those things as they're now adults? And now you're a grandma, right? What does that look like for you? You know, going through this process, you know, prior to UIGI, you know, you have been successful in your own right. Um, so what made you, besides, you know, obviously Rabu, I know that's been a lot of, for people, the determining factor, right? To get involved in UIGI. But for you, what was that thing that kind of clicked that you wanted to create something different and give your children and your grandchildren a different type of perception when it comes to that? Yeah, that's a great question as well. Um, I think that diversity is key. Um, one thing that I know is most of the time, what your parents do is not the thing that you want to do, right? <laughs> you, you kind of want to basically go the opposite direction. So my thought is like, how many things can I, how many options can I give? so that you can say, at least I can choose from one of these options because the world is giving options, right? right? The world is gonna give lots of options, whether it's that job, whether it is, um, you know, it could be positive things, even the road of college, the road of whatever, but I want to make sure I'm giving options to my offspring um, that are going to take them in the direction that I know is best for them. Right. Um, not that I'm trying to control anybody, but I know that I know what's inside of them. I know what they've seen. My, my sons, they don't, in their eyes, we've never worked, right? right? We've never worked jobs in their eyes, right? You know, my oldest son, he even got to the point where you know how they go through their phases where he was like, I'm not getting a job because dad never had a job. And I'm like, dad what? never had a job, really? <laughs> Let me break some things down right. for you. <laughs> so in their minds, we've never worked. So, but at the same time, that's good because we've always been there, right? Take them to school, pick them up from school, be it everything. We never had to miss anything. And therefore you get to not only have your own, but other people's as well. You know, you see so many kids that don't have the parents. So you become parent for all, but it can also be a bad thing because, or I wouldn't say bad, but more, more, less good, right? Okay. <laughs> less <Okay>. good. <laughs> because then they think that's how the world works, right? And so that's what we, that's what people always talk about as far as, you know, not giving your kids too much, they'll feel entitled and making them work hard for what they had, right? Because what's that balance there? Right. So we're constantly looking for that balance as a family that has means, how do you make your kids not spoil brats? So always looking for that thing or something to give them options. Hey, look at this. Is this something that interests you? Let's explore it a little bit more. And I think that's the thing really that um, took me to that place where I'm like, I want to learn more about this so that I can teach you guys so then you can take it and run. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Magda, question for you, please. So we always talk about the, you know, for us, the, uh, the vision, right? The why, right? I always say, you know, the question should be, why not? Right, because you a lot of times when you have a conversation with people and you share something that you're really excited about and you see how it is changing, you know, your life and the people around you that you're closest to, right? And you have that, you know, the resistance, the naysayers like, ah, I don't know, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know anything about it. So it's one of those things for you, like, why not? Like when, when you approach with something like an opportunity like this, um, what was the game changer for you? Like, why, you know, that would be the response. Honestly, uh, after trying so many things and like, like I said, my two kids, I raised them by myself and they don't know any other thing. They just see their friends, their rich friends getting, you know, this, traveling here, traveling there, going to a really nice school, which they do also. 
and they ask for things and I know I have to get it for them. It wasn't my fault what happened, you know, in the past or whatever. So, and I found out early on that just working a job, even though I did sales, that's what I'm good at. I did sales and I will make, you know, I make decent money, but not the money that will take me to what they want. So I was determined to try, you know, things that came my way. And they, the way I see it, if I don't, I just didn't want to regret anything. <clears throat> so I just want to try it. If it doesn't work, you know, I'm going to lose a couple hundred. So what? <laughs> but what if that was the one thing that was going to change my kid's life for the better? And how does that translate with your children? Like what they are experiencing and seeing with you in terms of that perception, how does that translate to them? Because of me taking those actions, um, I now have a lot of time to spend with them. And they see that and they see it, you know, mom more than they did before. So they love that. And they're learning um, their model, uh, role model. And they, they always say, I want to be like my mom when I grow up. <laughs> I'm going to ask my mom. My mom is smart. That's what they talk about. They go to school and all they talk about it, you know, like their essay, everything is about my mom. So I love that. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a very much a kudos and, a, and a, it's like a big props. Yeah to your to your to yourself so uh, that's amazing amazing um i'm just going to kind of do a little panorama so i'm just going to ask you guys why you are gi so we talked about you know what our why was our personal why right but there's all different types of opportunities right why this specific one did you kind of latch on to that was that felt different for you that seemed to be um you know that that changing that shift for me honestly like i said yesterday this was the only group, I've tried so many things. This is the only place that I found different platforms where I don't have to chase after someone. And that's just a, a big, big thing for me. And because I almost give up on um, network marketing because like it hasn't worked. It hasn't yeah. worked because I just don't, I'm not that person. Gotcha. Yes. So I don't call people two, three times. I don't, you know, go sit at coffee shops and stuff. I just, it's just not me. So, <laughs> okay, Magda. I've done it all. I have my real estate license, my life insurance license. I've done it all. So I've tried because I know there has to be an easier way. Um, and I keep searching and searching with your AGI. I, I really, really, really believe that I found it. And nothing is impossible from this moment on. You just have to plug in and, you know, pick up few stuff that works for you and just you know go at it and you will make that money and you will be successful yeah, yeah. awesome thank yeah. you guys Susan. i think for me why uigi is it gave me choices um i've said before i live where there's not a lot of people so years ago when i was in a network marketing company we drove three hours every tuesday after work to go to a meeting and take our people with us. And people were like, we're driving three hours to go look at something like, <laughs> because there was no internet. And we did every single Tuesday, I got a babysitter and we drove into the big city to go to a meeting. And then on Saturday or Sunday, we drive back there and we drive and we drive and we drive because we lived so far from everything. And I like sales and I can sell anything, but I'm tired of selling things. And so for UIGI, it was, I don't have to sell anything. I just I get to choose what I want to do. And I tell people how excited I am and they see that our life is changing and they ask me. And that's what I love is that it's not a hard sell and it's not a, okay, you got to drive here. Same thing. You got to set up a whiteboard. <laughs> you know, you do these things. I don't want to do that um, <laughs> ever again. Um, <laughs> truthfully. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> And so what I, what I really, really love is that I can just talk to people and, and tell them how excited I am. They know that I didn't know anything about the financial space. And so when I show this ring and show what I'm doing, they're like, what are you doing? Because if you can do it and like my background's people, not money. And so when they know that, then they're excited to look too. So for me, it's a fabulous space. I'm so excited to be in it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So for me, I think why UIGI initially is just Robo and Sherry. Like that was it because 
it wasn't that I needed something right. else, right? So I wasn't even really looking for something else. I was just looking to learn more about the crypto space. And I had no clue what all was even offered. So, you know, I kind of went in with one, one thing and then it began to open up and I began to see all of these other things. I'm like, what have I been doing? There's like 40,000 people in here. Where, what was I doing? So it, it was really the Gary's initially for me. But now that um, I'm a part of it, you know, sometimes like if you're in the group, the UIGI group, there's so many people and so many posts and so much going on that you can really get overwhelmed. You can get lost in the sauce, especially if you're not a social media person which I am, but I'm talking about if you're right. not, right? But once we became a part of the VIP group and it was now a smaller group of people, it was like, oh yeah, this is it right here. This is it, this is, this is it, this is the one. It's not pushy. There's no one saying, um, you gotta get out there and make those sales. You gotta get out there and get 20 this week. You know, there's none of that. And it's just peaceful, just a peaceful place. So that's it. So why you are GR for me? Uh, Rabu Gary. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's that's simply it. Rabu Gary. Did y'all have a conversation like prior to him like starting us off with his partner? Like how did that even? We How did like in your household? We did not. He um he did <laughs> tell me that he was going to invest in something, and at that time, I was working a part time job, and I was like, I don't want to be doing this forever. And he was like, I'm going to invest in something because he had invested in crypto prior to beginning UIGI. And he had lost, he had made some money because it was with Bitcoin. And then he had um, also lost some money. So when he said he was taking the $400 to do that, I was like, uh, this better work. I was like, because we don't have $400 to spare. And um, he was, he started, it was in that, you know, the raggedy one. Right. And um, he started making money in it. And I was like, he was like, Sherry, you're making money. And he was like, it's going up and it's going up. And he was like, and I'm going to start a Facebook group and we're going to have all these people. Like he saw the vision before, before it was off. even kicked off to anything. He started out with just him and his partner, two people. Yep. And now it's over 51,000 people in that group. And I just, as the numbers were going up, I was like, you need to put me and the girls in it. Because he was like, crypto, you're just a number. You're just a wallet. Wow, right. Nobody knows our ages or anything. So um, we added our two broke best friends in it and um, they would be watching their wallet and then saying, oh, dad, I need to um, give you my money so you can sell to other people. So they would send him their money and <laughs> everybody was on it in the house. And then the raggedy thing fell apart. And then the girls were like, you got to put us in something else because we're not making any money. <laughs> Mind you, they're still spending our money, but it was nice to see that how they were encouraged, and especially our little one. She is on it. She's all about the numbers. She's all about the bottom line. And she was like, I, can't, I paid daddy such and such and such and such, but my money didn't go up that much. I'm like, we, did you eat last week? Hello? Did you, did, are the lights still on in? Right. Okay. You got paid. Okay, you got paid. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, my biggest reason for UIGI is my husband, Carl awesome. Gary. Awesome. And we definitely appreciate the vision. I think for me personally, and for people that I have uh, come in contact with, that I have no idea what they look like, what they do, you know, being able to connect with them across a whole nother space. Um, that was for me kind of the same thing, you know, being able to see that, that transparency and integrity and that vision, you know, that, that has been the driving force for a lot of people, I would say. For... Go ahead, Miss Judy. Why UIGI? Uh, one word, easy. And the reason I say that is because I learned that sometimes you have to fail in order to succeed. And in my journey, I did okay, but the end result wasn't what I expected. Um, I didn't give up, didn't give up. But my biggest why is, are my children and that's what kept me going. Um, the end of the day, once I found this vehicle, it was a wrap. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how else to say it. You got, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because at this point, you guys already know you're in the right place at the right time. 
Um, I did become part of the NFL team, which is no friends left. I didn't want that anymore. I didn't want to have to deal with other people. And that's why I said, this is easy. The success, the extra success came with, because I was having success. People saw that. I had to become a product of that. Once I became a product and they saw it, guess what? I didn't have to chase anybody. I didn't have to depend on anyone. And they were coming to me, knocking down the door. And that's what I wanted. I did, I, and I love helping people, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a very big whale. I love to have fun and I love to help people, but I didn't wanna feel like I had to do it. There's a difference. And that's what I love about this company. I mean, this group, this book club. <laughs> 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 the book club. And um, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing team. Just meeting you guys for the first time. We all saw each other on Zooms and, and, and chats and, you know, all kinds of things. But to actually sit here and rub elbows with you guys, do I need to say more? I mean, it is what it is at this point. That's my why. Just all those things together collectively. I did not get that other than the, the networking and the friendships. And, but the, where was the money? You know, people say money isn't everything, but believe me, it's up there with oxygen, okay? <laughs> y'all can say whatever y'all want, <laughs> but for me, it was definitely up there. Of course, the relationships were, came by default, you know, but again, that's the way we live. We have to have it. Yeah. So that's my life. Amazing. Sharon, go ahead. Why you IGI? I'm sitting here listening to everybody and I'm like, okay, they already said that, they already said that. <laughs> But um, I've been in the network marketing space since 2014, mostly in the travel space, because I love to travel. You know, Warren Buffett said, if you, if you love something, make it a hobby. If the world loves something, make, make it a it business. 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 And that just made sense to me, right? Why you IGI? Um, originally, because I got tired of watching his posts, like I said yesterday, 47 and retire. <laughs> y'all better, y'all better stop sleeping. Y'all better stop tripping. Y'all better hit me up. Right. And I was, like I said, I'm a teacher. And during and, and I and I was involved in network marketing company, was not making money. The money that I make in UIGI, right? Making a little bit, um, the pandemic hit, no meetings, kind of things kind of just kind of went like stagnant, right? And some of that was my fault because I just didn't really pursue. I had put myself in a space where I was making some extra money driving Lyft and Uber. But when the pandemic hit, that was all shot because I'm not putting myself in that space. And when I stopped and took my little $400 and put it in Coinbase and they held it for a week. <laughs> so, okay. Eight right. days I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> Eight days. I'm learning, okay. And then I got in that raggedy thing and it was like, balling. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're making more laying in bed than getting up driving, you know, eight hours on a Saturday, Uber and Lyft, extra money. I'm like, y'all better stop playing. Y'all better, better play. Like <laughs> Come on, check it out. Receipts on, stay on, on, on Facebook. We were blowing it up. We were raggedy with it. <laughs> but why are you IGI? I love learning. I love learning and every, just getting a new phase pops up and, 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 and you got to learn it. And he wasn't teaching everything, right? We sponsored by Rabu, you know, you trial by fire. Play and pause, play and pause, <laughs> play and pause. <laughs> and that's why I'm grateful for the mod group because we have united and we've helped lift each other up. And sometimes Rabu comes to the mod group and say, hey guys, y'all know how to do this, y'all know that. And we, we have answers. We're all learning. And to be in a learning space, you know, there's, there's some snow up here. And some people my age, they think they know it all, but they're still going to work every day. I went and met with the retirement people this summer. 
And they're like, you're not going to do 25 years? Hell no. <laughs> I got in the game late. I got in the game when I was 43 years old teaching. I love teaching. I do. But to do it for the next seven years, that ain't, I, don't, I ain't got that to do. And you, IGI, has given me what I've been searching for. And one of my colleagues who started in the raggedy phase <laughs> with me, you know, and he put his money in, but he wouldn't listen. Take it out, recycle it, take it out. One third rule. I, I didn't get that one third rule until, you know, I should have gotten it when I was in that raggedy phase, but I didn't. But then he didn't get in anything else because the raggedy phase fall apart. I don't know. But when I saw him after being virtual for a year and a half, he said, she's always been looking for a way to get out of education. And that wasn't true. Mm. I haven't always been looking for a way to get out of education. I've always been looking for a way to, to enhance my lifestyle, right? But in looking for a way to enhance my lifestyle, I just happen to find a way to get out of education. Right. <laughs> Who says I can't? I, you know, what a, and here's the thing. One of the greatest teachers in my life was my mother, and she wasn't certified. Right? Yes, she was, though. But she was, exactly. So I don't have to stop teaching. I just have a different cadre of people to teach. So I'm not getting out of teaching. I'm just getting out of the education system. All right, out of the job system. I'm gonna go through this year because I, I do love my man. I could be having a tough day. And I don't know if you guys saw a post that I put up last week. I was having a tough day. Like I was didn't want to go. <laughs> and somebody from when I owned the skate shop back in the late 90s, who was a you know 18, 19 year old kid that I gave a job to seven dollars an hour, said. You know, he used to listen to motivational stuff all the time. And he said, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. But now this guy's in his 40s. He's a father of three. And he said, you know, about a month ago, I started getting up and listening to motivational stuff. I get it. And I needed that. that that's, a, that's that one little thing I needed to propel me through like a week. You know, you never know who's watching. You never know who's watching and how you impact. And you idea, y'all watching? Come on. So we're gonna kind of follow up with that question. Thank you. We're gonna follow up. We can go to uh, Mike to Judy because you kind of touched base on what I was gonna ask. When it comes to that shift, right? Um, you talked about, you know, um, finding a different way to do something, right? What does it look like to you? What's that sound like? What's what does it look like for the people around you, right? How, how are you impacting that shift amongst your circle, right? And I'm finding, at least in this arena, that it's more the times that it's impacting people that you don't know, right? People that you have never come in contact with, that you would not in, in other situations, right? Other than in this type of opportunity. You know, what does that shift mean to you personally, right? You know, you talked about, Judy, you talked about, you know, you've always wanted to, have a situation where you become financially free. What does that What does that look like for you? What does that feel like for you to be in that in a space to that where that's actually obtainable? Yeah, phenomenal question. Um, I guess I want to say, I'll start by saying rather, um, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I've lived by that model once I started network marketing and it's gotten me this far. Again, I, I went through some turmoil, but it was something I needed to go through to make me the person I am today. And um, I feel amazing right now, almost speechless. I know it's probably hard for you guys to wait. She's talking. <laughs> um, but I do, I feel like, I'm on top of the world to finally be able to get this. It means the world to me. Like 
some people probably say, oh, I've had two or three, or for, but for me, this means the, like I've accomplished something in life. You know, people work day-to-day -day jobs and I'm, nothing wrong with a job because it pays the bills. But for me personally, it's everything. I've shared goals and dreams and try to be there to help other people accomplish their goals and dreams. And it feels good. I feel like I deserve a pat on my back. And if no one else does it, I'm gonna do it for myself. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. I'm a, I, you know, no one else may big me up, but I will for myself right. because I have to be my biggest cheerleader. Right. People see and watch everything you do. So because they're doing that, we have to continuously, even when we're off the cameras, watch what we're doing because people are gonna be like, that's a cool person. And that's why I can say that about Rabu, because no matter on, off, hanging out, whatever, <laughs> he has never changed who he is. Always a giving person, he and his wife. That's why I hang around. And just like I think one of you mentioned, it's all about your circle. Yeah. And you have to keep that circle tight because everybody's not there for you. I've learned that over the years and it hurts. But guess what? God had my back and he continuously puts the right people in front of me. And that's why I'm on this stage today with all of you guys. Well, you guys right now, but <laughs> you guys as well. You may not physically be on this stage, but you are a part of that circle. And I'm just honored to know you guys and finally meet. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. We have a couple more minutes. So we want to make sure I get to everybody. <laughs> I'm just kind of follow up to it. You know, for you, obviously, you know, the being a part of this process where I've been part of this journey and really trusting in him as your partner, right? What does that, what does that, how does that make you feel personally? You know, you, you are still an individual, right? But you are, you are part of this phenomenal duo, right? So how does that make you feel? So I know a lot of people, and I'm gonna keep it brief because I want to get everybody else a chance to talk. Um, but I know a lot of people say yesterday they're an introvert. I'm an introvert. I am the extrovert introvert, if you've ever read the personality yes. traits. Yeah. So that's me on the outside. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. But on the other side, I'm like, Robo, I don't want to be on stage. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. He's like, uh-huh, I hear you, but I'm here. So um, I would say it means freedom. And for me, um, I didn't grow up struggling. I, 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 every need was supplied. And then a lot of wants were supplied as well. But to hear his story and to hear where he is now, I'm like, I'm so, so happy. And I'm like overwhelmed with like the success that he has had. And then it makes me even happier to see like the faces and hear the names. Like I was telling, I don't forget who I was talking to yesterday, but I'm like, I may not speak to everybody or have an engaging conversation with everybody, but just know I'm cheering for every single one of you. I'm in the background. He's like, this person got a ring. I'm like, yay, yay. I'm all excited. He's like, Sherry, you don't even know him. I'm like, yeah, but I'm happy for him because I know what that means for their household. I know what it has meant for our household. So your success is our success. And internally, I, I receive that as we're all winning. Yeah. Like it's not a Rabu and Sherry thing. It's a Sharon thing. It's a Judy thing. It's a Shari thing. Like we're all winning. So that's what it means for me. Awesome. And, and, you know, the material things are just icing on the cake. Yeah. So. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Go ahead, Sam. Yep. So can you refresh me on? So it's just a matter of what does that look like for you to create a space, right, for not just for yourself, but for the people that are closest mm -hmm. to you, that mean the most. What does that mean look like for you? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing um, to be able to just kind of have something that is easy right, that anybody can get involved with because as network marketers, we know that that is not really a space where everybody can win. Can win. I mean, I know that they say anybody can do this, right? But, <laughs> but the reality the is, <laughs> <laughs> the reality is anybody can. Like it takes a, a different kind of person to be able to win in that space. I don't care what anybody says. It takes a different kind of person. It takes a different kind of uh, care. It takes a different kind of personality. And it even takes a different, it takes a different type of grit. And at times it even takes a different type of um, 
meanness, right? Because it's so competitive. Um, so anybody really can't do it. But in this, anybody can really do it because you don't need the right people, so to speak, right. to be able to do it too in order for you to win. So that makes it an easier transition, right? If, I'm, if I tell somebody about what I'm doing, if they ask or if I, if I approach them, it doesn't matter. There is no pressure on me or on them. So it's a powerful, really, position to be in, um, to know that you have something. And anytime a person comes back, you still have it. Great. You're ready now? I'm ready to help you. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, it's just a powerful position, but it also allows you to really care for a person that you're bringing along instead of looking at them as a sale, how much I can make off of that. Yes. Now you can say, you know what? I really care. I really want you to be a part of this right. so that you can win too. But if not, I'll see you when you're ready. Right. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead, Fred. I think I can probably follow up a little bit on that is that I find that you do not know who is in the crypto space and you'd be completely surprised at who is in the crypto space because I wouldn't be someone that people would think would be in it, right? <laughs> um, I, I've had people come to me after I've been in it and say, oh, we've been doing crypto. And I look at them and think, all right, I would have never called you. <laughs> and, that, and that's cool. And that's what I love. And I think for me, this ring means I have choice and I like living at choice. And I, I like that I have options and I get to make the decisions. And every day when I look at this, it makes me know that I now have choices and I'm in control. And I think that's, that's a big thing for everybody. It's a big thing for my kids. I want them to live at choice so that they know that they can decide what they want to do. And for me, um, as a social worker, I try to teach people that all the time, right? Like you're in charge of your destiny. You got to live at choice, but sometimes that's hard to do. And now it's not. Yeah. Now I have the, the vehicle and the options to live at choice. And that's what this means to me. Awesome. And Magda, not, last but not least, you're closing out our, our panel today. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Okay, so um, for me, in my circle, in my circle, I'm the one that always goes out and tries stuff. Put my money here, put my money there. Like I said, a bunch of license to sell this, to sell that, involved in everything. So it's not just about me winning at this. I have a lot of people that depend on me, whether they know it or not. Um, starting from my brothers, my, my kids, number one, and then my close friends, they're like, you know, working, making $12, $13 an hour, um, struggling. So whenever I see opportunity, I, I think about them. I'm like, I'm going to try this. I, I hope it works. If it does, you know, all these people I'm going to tell, all these people um, that, you know, could get involved and change their life. So now this is just I know I'm saying this again and again I'm just so happy for my friends that don't even know it like you know yeah because I've approached them maybe with different things in the past so I'm just giving them some time but it's funny like sometimes they call me now they're like hey what's going on you know it's like <laughs> I haven't heard from you or pitching this or pitching that but like they call me and or they see us going on vacation and stuff. Oh, I get and you're not working. I'm like, oh, not not really. <laughs> like, right. What's going on? And even like the 20 hours I work because I want to, and all it's funny. All the managers know, and they know not to mess with me. Can I? I can walk out anytime I want to, and it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. Yes, yes, and, it is. And my kids, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, when I grow up, I'm gonna work this. Up. Now they're like, I'm gonna own this. Like I make it's sure they shift. know. I'm, yeah. Yeah, it's, that so shift it's, for it's sure. a mind shift and they're involved, uh, even though they're 10 and 13, they're very much involved. They know everything. They know Rabu. <laughs> they're like, every time I watch the, the video, they know everything. So it's, it's a great feeling um, not to need to work, but it's like I'm there because I want to and I, I'm, I enjoy it. And just knowing how many people's life I can change based on the information I have. It's yeah, just, absolutely. It just, it feels good. It feels good. Well, ladies, this has been an amazing uh, conversation and still in tea. So I really appreciate your, 
your honesty and your ability to explain, you know, what this what this experience has been for you guys. So I really appreciate it. So Thank you. that's all. Yeah. Let's give it up for the UIGI ladies. Great job. Good job. Yeah. All right, was that amazing or what? This this is good. This is good. What I love for, for panels like this, you get a chance to hear people's story. And I'm sure you can relate to many of their stories. And and it's just a good thing to see how behind the scenes things work. And they did a phenomenal job from each guest to the moderator. Again, let's give one more big big hand. Good job. All right, so now we'll get another brief on one of our phases. Um, this is a phase that in particular I thought was very, very important for us because we're all making money in this crypto space, right? And we believe and hope that crypto will be here forever. Is that fair to say? Yeah. We believe and hope that. But if it doesn't, we also need to park our money in some concrete, tangible things, such as mortgage notes, such as uh, um, Amazon stores and, and, and Walmart stores, such as precious metals. And one thing took me over the top, my good friend sent me an article of the former owner of the Utah Jazz. He passed away. But he left his family behind a coin collection. And I could be wrong with these numbers, but I think it was only 1,500 coins. But that coin collection sold for like $24 million. And I remember, and Sherry could attest to this, it was a time when we were broke. We had a whole bunch of broke stories. But we were broke, and, and we got a ring from another company. We got a ring from a company called Prepaid Legal Services. And we were so broke. And I bust my, we bust our behind to get that ring for nine years. But we were so broke, I had to go sell that ring. And we got $400 for that gold ring. But thank God I had the gold because we needed to buy some groceries. Are you with me? So imagine the ring you have today that appraises very high, but you had to go sell it. But because it was precious metals, I could go sell it and we could buy some groceries. And so precious metals is very, very important. So with that, we're going to bring up my good friend you heard from yesterday, my CPA, Mr. Richard Brough. Let's give him a real big hand. Touch. Mic check. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, we all get excited, and it is exciting about the cryptos. It's it's fun, it's exciting, it's it's sexy, it's hot right now. But don't forget the the what I would call the more stable platforms or phases. Um, I like Amazon stores. I have a client who's had an Amazon store for the last several years doing very well with it. I'm really excited about moving into the mortgage notes industry, learning more about it. Thank you for bringing that to us. Hopefully you, you've taken all the, you've all taken that course as well. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, 7K metals and the precious metals side of things, because uh, I'm finding it's the most, um, the least the least understood on, on why precious metals, why, you know, I joined because Rob says I need to join it, I want the ring, okay? Well, that's a good reason for joining, but let's understand a little bit better. I'm going to go through uh, precious metals, why, what your benefits are with 7K metals. I'm going to go through really fast. There's a lot of benefits there. You know, in, in just a few minutes I have today, I can't go through all the benefits in detail. Please reach out to me through Facebook. You know, send me a, a friend request, and I can do training Zoom meetings for you and your team so you can understand it. But first, let's just talk about money. I think we can all agree that it seems like we work harder and harder every year to make money just to, to cover our basic needs. I like to say it's like a treadmill, okay? Financially, you got to keep moving forward just to stay in the same place. You stop, you're going to fall off the treadmill, right? Well, finances, they, click, they keep clicking that up. You better strap on your track shoes and get sprinting if you want to get ahead financially. And that's what Rob was helping us do with the UIGI group. So what's happening? Well, this is happening. We're going to go back to 1913, which is when they created the Federal Reserve and also the Internal Revenue Code. That was just a bad year. Okay. And this is cut off right here to 2013. But the purchasing power, the dollar's lost 95% of its purchasing power in that 100 years. You follow that out, and it's lost a couple more percentage of the purchasing power. 
a couple of key dates right here, 1944, that was a good year. World War II was winding down. They decided to use the United States dollar as the world's currency to transact with, because it was backed by gold. It was convertible into gold, okay? Uh, another year on here, 1971, not such a great year. That's when they took us off the gold standard. That's what allows the government to run the printing presses and print out the trillions and trillions of dollars. And although we, we like it, we're getting all the free money and everything, that's a bad thing from the economy. It's like a good tea. The more water you put in it, the more diluted it is, okay? And this, what's, it's causing things like this. This is what people call inflation, the cost of goods going up, right? Wrong. That's what I used to think. That's what most people think. Inflation is not the cost of goods going up. It's the purchasing power of the dollar going down, okay? So we look at food in this 20 year time period here, food got up 43%. Does anybody own a car? You have to insure it, it's, it's doubled in that 20 year time period. Kids going to school, get a good savings account, okay? And, and let me show you what I mean with inflation. Let's go back to 1965. 1965, silver was $1 an ounce, okay? So one ounce of silver and one dollar would buy the same thing. You go to a grocery store and you could buy a gallon of milk with one dollar or one ounce of silver. Roll forward to today, you ain't gonna buy a gallon of milk for a dollar. Can you get a pint of milk for a dollar? That same silver will buy you five gallons of milk. My favorite example is the Ford Mustang, okay? I'm, I'm old school, I like muscle cars. This is my era, uh, 1965. You could walk into a Ford dealership with $2,500 bills or 2,500 ounces of silver and walk away with a brand new Ford Mustang. Today, $2,500 isn't gonna cut it. They'll send you to the tire department. If you buy a set of tires, maybe a rim, okay? But the value of 2,500 of these will buy you two Ford Mustangs. So inflation is not the cost of goods going up. Goods have got cheaper if you compare it to something like precious metals. It's only got more expensive because the value of the dollar has gone down. Okay, and uh, I'm going to introduce you to 7K metal. I've been buying precious metals. Well, I've been collecting my whole life. My grandma was a small child would give us silver dollars for, for Christmas, for our birthday presents. Okay, um, my mother used to get the junk silver. Pre-1965, they were 90% silver. The coins were dimes, you know, quarters and 50 cent pieces. So, but uh, 2008, I've been really into the precious metals. In 2016, 7K Metals came along uh, with a better way to be able to buy the precious metals. So I jumped on with them. And basically what they've solved is some questions on what precious metals should I be buying? Where should I be buying them? Who can I trust? There's a lot of fake stuff going on out there, right? And how can I afford to buy in small quantities? Maybe I don't have a bunch of money to stick into precious metals. Maybe I've only got 20 bucks. I want to invest it in some silver or something, okay? So they created a membership model so picture Sam's Club or Costco, you pay an annual membership and the membership has its benefits, okay? The main benefit that drew me to 7K Metals originally was their price on the bullion, okay? I've been buying pr precious metals for eight years before they came along. They had the best prices on this, on the bullion. Now the bullion is the rounds and the, the bars. There's no collector's value necessarily with it. Then you have numismatics or the collector's coins. Okay, so right now I'm talking more about the bullion. And how they did that is first the precious metals, they go into the mint. And then they're minted, they're turned into rounds and bars. Okay, and then there's the big guys. There's 13 authorized dealers that deal directly with the mint. They get the best prices because they buy lots and lots of it. Now, normally those, the dealers would sell it to brokers, wholesalers, retailers to us. So there's lots of hands along the way that's got to, pay bills and make a profit. Well, 7K used their clout, the contracts with several of those authorized dealers. So they're buying it directly from the authorized dealer, they sell to us, you know, getting rid of all the middlemen. And they do not make money. We don't make money on the bullion. They're selling that to us at cost. When you buy bullion, I don't make any money. 7K Metals doesn't make money. That's how they can get the best prices to us on it. And there's no minimums. So if I've got, if I've got, uh, I can buy one ounce of silver, I can buy a 10th ounce of silver for the same price per ounce as somebody that's buying a thousand ounces of silver or gold, okay? So it's really for the little guy. Another benefit, 
that this right here was worth the membership to me at the, what they call the buyer certification program, which is that is based on why I'm buying precious metals, what should I be buying? Now remember, I've been doing this for eight years before they came along. I thought I knew what I was doing. I found out I didn't. I was doing some of the stuff I, was, I should have been doing, but some of the stuff that I should have been doing, I was not doing. Uh, so that was worth the, the price of membership, just getting that education side of it. And I keep saying, based on why you buy precious metals. Well, there's five main reasons they come up with. I've got actually a sixth reason. In my financial freedom program, I teach people for your emergency, your long-term emergency fund, it's better in precious metals than in the main. Because I don't know if it's common out here, but I, do they have Cabela's out here? It's like an outdoor store. You buy, I, I do a lot of stuff outdoors, hunting, fishing, camping, stuff like that. And to me, lots of times my financial emergency is Cabela's is having a sale and it goes off on Tuesday. Okay, so there goes my emergency fund if it's cash in the bank. I don't touch my silver for a Cabela's sale. It's there for a true emergency. Okay, but the main reasons are there's a hedge against poor government decisions. Now, part of, most of you are probably not like me, but I don't think the government does the best job of managing my money. Okay. And we just kind of see it accelerating as time goes on, as the years go on and stuff. Um, and and the, you, we've already seen the money problems with our monetary system and stuff. Some people just use it to accumulate wealth. Um, I have a client, well, there, there's Larry Miller that Rabu referenced. He used to own the Utah Jazz, he died several years ago. His wife sold his personal collection. Nobody knew he was, had a collection, just sold it for just under $24 million and then donated it to the Children's Hospital down in Salt Lake City. But I also have a client, he's in his 90s. Okay, he's been getting precious metals just for several decades, just a little here, a little there. Well, now he's, uh, we're working on gifting it to his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren to get out of his estate because it's just over $8 million worth of this stuff, the bullion. Okay, so both very powerful, the collector side and the bullion side. Once you accumulate that wealth, it'd be nice to protect it. Protect it against things like inflation. Okay, you're outpacing inflation with precious metals where you're losing ground with, with the dollar. A lot of people just don't want to diversify their portfolio. They've got some real estate, maybe some mortgage notes. They got mutual funds. They got all these different things. They want to diversify out into precious metals. And then probably the, the funnest one is the coin collecting. And that's one thing that I did not appreciate before joining 7K Metals. I was just in for the bullion. But now I've gotten actually a pretty nice little, as a matter of fact, I'm getting a little bit overboard a little bit, maybe on my coin collecting, because it's, it's so fun. But one thing on that, other than the, the you know, the Larry Miller story that, that Rabu told you about, is there's a simple thing that we could have done in my lifetime, but there's what's called an MS-70. MS means mint state. Okay, so like my Mustang, if I have a mint condition Mustang, it's worth a lot more than Mustang that's been sitting on some farmer's field for the last 50 years. Well, these are mint state. And by the way, I've got, I brought some of my coins, just a small handful of my coins with me. If you wanna, I'd love to share them to you afterwards if you wanna kind of look at them. But a mint state silver eagle, so like I said, this is a silver eagle, it's just a silver dollar. I can take it to the store and buy a candy bar if they're on sale, okay? Don't wanna do that because it's worth about 30 bucks as an ounce of silver, but I could buy something for a dollar. Okay, well, the MS-70 version of that, they look under a microscope, there's no flaws, no blemishes, it's a perfect coin. They put it in a plastic slab and give it that 70 rating. And there's different ratings, a one would be unrecognizable as a coin, 70 is perfect. Well, if you would have bought one of those since they started producing in 1986, every month, you'd, you'd have spent over that time period probably 45 to $50,000 to get them. That collection now would be worth $1.2 million of just the MS-70 Silver Eagles. If anybody happens to have a 1999 one, it's about 20 grand. There wasn't very many perfect ones minted in 1999 because Y2K, okay? Um, now, they, the, the problem with that is self-discipline. So they came up with an auto-saver program. And to me, it, it is, it's, a, it's my savings account, okay? I don't buy precious metals. I don't invest in precious metals. I just swap my fiat paper money for silver and gold. It's, it's my savings account. And so this is optional, but if you're on that, they will actually, they'll just send you one of those MS-70 collectible coins every month. There, you have three to choose from. 
the basic, which is just the Silver Eagle, that $1.2 million coin. But to make it even more valuable, they've, they've started a state collection. The label is just each individual state. And there's only so many of them produced, and it's only by 7K metals. So even those, I'm, I'm buying them for their, like 100 bucks a month. I'm, I'm selling them late. I, I buy several of them each month. I sell them later on for, I've sold them for about $160. Then I use that to, for the ones I'm keeping because I want a full set of that collection. The most common one is the variety coin. The coins, it, it's a state series again. That's the, the New York uh, beaver. Um, each state has their own coin and the coins are minted specifically for 7K metals, even more collectible. And those things go up in value quite a bit. Um, and they got the specialty coin. I don't buy a lot of those, but it's a one half gram gold coin. And so you can choose which one, which ones you want of those if you choose, if you go that way. A big thing, a lot of people say, what do I do with all these precious metals, especially the bullion? I don't want to get robbed. Well, one of the owners is a billionaire and a billion dollars can get you a lot of stuff. So they built their own private vault in Idaho Falls, Idaho, where they're based out of. And uh, attached to that is a sound money wallet. So your bullion, you can actually just buy it and have them vault it for you. A lot of people ask, well, how do I, how do I, what's, I got an emergency. How do I sell my bullion? Did I take it to the coin store? What do I do? Well, in the sound money wallet, you can transfer from cash to gold, cash to silver, back to silver and gold, and uh, with a click of a button. I can also, they have a member to member transfer, so I can transfer money to, that's how I sell my coins, they usually just transfer it to me. If I want it in my possession, wrong button, they, this, I say just send me so many ounces of silver, so many ounces of gold, it's two day FedEx out to you if you want the bullion in your hands. Um, this is an example of the sound money wallet. There's, there's cash in there. My cash comes from the commissions I make on it. Okay, the referral program. Uh, but you can also, you can link it to your bank account, transfer it there, you can wire it in there. You can uh, use your cryptocurrencies to put into there. And then from there, you can say, okay, here, give me so many dollars worth of silver, so many dollars worth of gold with a click of a button. You click a button, I can go from silver and gold back to cash, transfer it into my local bank account if I got some sort of an emergency. So just a quick overview of the, the major benefits. They do have a referral program. So those that do that, then you got residual income coming in for a lifetime. The auto saver program is the coin, I call it the coin of the month. Advantage Awards, I didn't talk about that. That's not a huge deal to me, but it's a savings program. My wife uh, finished a craft room in her basement and she got a discount at uh, Home Depot for the floor coverings and paint and stuff like that. I, I live in an area where we don't have stores like that, not a lot of people. So we don't take advantage of that very much because we don't have the stores to, to go to. Um, they have very limited and rare coins. Uh, these are coins I'm, I, my daughter bought one, $350, two days later, it's worth $800, just because there's 500 coins minted and several thousand people that wants them to collect them. A sound money wallet, for those that do the business side of it, there's the 1099 tax write-offs, I'm sure you're all benefit, aware of the tax benefits of having a home-based business. If you want to do a retirement account, you can put it into an IRA backed, uh, excuse me, precious metals backed IRA. Um, they have a health care program for those who need health insurance. It's not insurance, but it's a good health care program. The precious metals, of course, are the, uh, the dealer direct pricing, the education system, all those types of things. As you guys know, there's two memberships, the standard and the premium. I have sold a couple standard memberships, but the premium, there's just more bang for your buck when you look at all the benefits of what they provide. Now, the referral program, I'm just going to touch for about two minutes on that. If you have questions on it, feel free to get a hold of me. But they want people to be able to afford the precious metals. And so they have a dual team system, two teams, right team, left team. Each time you have 500 points on each team, you uh, uh, generate a $500 check. You get the points by selling the memberships, those auto savers, the rare coins have uh, points as well as um, be able to sell them for a profit. I don't do the retail sales side of it, it doesn't interest to me. You wanna be an affiliate for them or an associate, it's two membership sales, one on your right team, one on your left team. That qualifies you to make up to $500 a week. Um, I generally try to encourage people to at least become an associate, just that even if you're making $500 a month, that pays for your precious metals. 
Okay, so it's not, I've been buying precious metals well for a long time, but the last five years I've been with 7K, none of it's come out of my household budget. It's come from uh, my commissions that I get on it. You wanna make more than $500 a week? No problem, sell two more memberships, one on your left, one on your right, now you can earn up to $1,000 a week. Um, that's all I'm really going to say about that. Um, you have questions, you know, get with me. I can do training, we can do Zoom meetings and stuff like that. And I go to a lot of, as Rob was mentioned, I do a lot of training for direct sales companies. They all end up with a slide similar to this, come help me change the world, you know, whatever it is. I always kind of thought that was cheesy, except for that, that's what I want to do. I want to change the world with precious metals. I call it building a stronger economy, one family at a time. And it fits perfect with what Rob Wu is doing. Okay, we want to change the world financially. So again, if you have any questions, anything, get with me. Uh, happy to answer questions. Happy to schedule Zooms with your teams. I've done that for some of the teams. And uh, thanks, Rob Wu. I love seven K medals. Um, we just love them. We we have the goals. We've had, we've been uh, earned a watch. Rich, if I'm not mistaken, there's only twenty of these watches in the world. Twenty of the watches in the world. This is a signature watch. It's amazing. We just got rewarded awarded it yesterday. So uh, we had it for a while, but Richard bought one. I'm so excited about that. So the next group, and another thing about 7K Metals, well, as Richard said, you can't call insurance, but their health policy plan that they have, Sherry and I was paying what, $1,500 a month? We was paying a little bit more than $1,500 a month to insure our children for medical insurance. Our doctor takes 7K's coverage. It's only $700 a month. It's incredible. We have Blue Cross Blue Shield. I like Blue Cross Blue Shield. We have another plan, $700 a month, and it does exactly what our other plan did. So if you have to independently insure yourself, it's a great plan to have. So with that, the next group we're going to bring up, I like to call them the New Jacks. And the reason why I call them the New Jacks, that's a, that's a good term of endearment when I grew up, is people who are new to certain industries. And these folks are a little new to the networking industry, um, but they're doing great for themselves in their own right. And so we have a great moderator who's going to moderate for them. The New Jacks, you know who you are. Let's bring them to the stage. Put your hands together for the UIG New Jacks. Let's give them a real big hand. You've heard the mic, he says. You guys hear me? Perfect. All right, I'm going to give you guys a mic, but I'm going to control the mic. <laughs> we know how this works. If the mic's not controlled, our 30 minutes going to be over. All right. All right, guys. Uh, basically, I'm going to pull up my cheat sheet real quick here. Got some serious questions for you guys. First of all, I'm just going to real quick give you the mic. Real quick, you know, say who you are and what's your background. Got this? Perfect. <laughs> Start. G14 class. That's right. Okay. Uh, I'm Bobby Blackburn. I've, um, I'm from Shamrock, Texas. I've always grew up working and always had a job, so I'm trying to get away from that. Right now, I'm a lease operator with uh, oil, oil and gas company. What was, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Trey Stevens. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the 27 year military, uh, just recently retired, uh, turned entrepreneur. I don't really know. Uh, freedom seeker. Uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, married two older children. They're both, uh, they're both military as well. Tiffany Williams background is credit money and finance. Uh, nickname is the Olivia Pope of finance. I'm a native from Detroit. I uh, moved to Tennessee 12 years ago, stayed there for 12 years, moved from there to Atlanta. I've been in Atlanta three years and I'm ready to go to Florida. Um, you know, they say retiring is good, but having the option to retire is good. So I love what I do. 
Um, I don't see myself retiring from this and I am excited, ready and locked and loaded. I'm Simone Lang, I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. I am a self-employed photographer, had to change things up thanks to vid. So now reinventing myself and um, I'm looking for the financial freedom that these investments are bringing my way. All right, you can keep the mic. We'll start back there. We'll go this way with the next question. I keep these, these questions are pretty well gonna be like simple. I want you to kind of think about it and like, you know, answer it like your real side, like act like it's just you and me talking, you know, no sugar coating and let's just keep it real because we only deal with real people. We want to do that sugar coating stuff. We know different businesses for that. <laughs> Hi, what made you want to invest your time to learn what UIGI is about? Trey Stevens had introduced me to crypto. I knew nothing about it. Um, I spent two weeks deep diving into all the ins and outs, the goods, the bads, and the possibilities is what appealed to me that I did not have to have a whole bunch of people behind me. I could do it on my own because I prefer being solo and just the possibilities of creating a new world for myself and my family. We'll just do the same question all the way down. So we're doing a real talk. <laughs> okay. The real, real talk's two minutes. Two minutes, <laughs> one minute and 98 seconds left. Um, I got bamboozled by a fake UGI, right? So I found Rav. And I commented in the group and the person was actually a moderator and hurry up and deleted me out of the group. So I messaged him and said, hey, I've been deleted and I know who the culprit is. Put me back in that group because I like you. So he let me back in, laughed. And um, there was some programs in there that I was like, mm, those are sexy, right? because money is sexy. So I said, let me just watch a little bit because I always jump in like heavy throttle Bitcoins. So I watched for a minute and one day he said, if you're not in this program, you got to practically be a fool. So I said, mm, let me message him. Hopefully he get the spoke signal. So I messaged him and he said, hey, Tiff, how are you? I said, is this you or an assistant? He said, it's me. <laughs> so he gave me the blueprint, um, also gave me the um, group that actually helps you set up because I'm extremely intelligent, but I'm techno targeted. So I was asking him, <laughs> so I was asking him like 3000 questions to a point where he was like, hey, really, I don't do this, okay. So I got in that group, I got connected to some of the right moderators, some of the right um, people, and it's just been up from there. Everything that he posts, I probably hop in 90% like ASAP. The other 10 is just because I'm kind of like, mm, not a fave. And then I just hop right back. <laughs> uh, so yeah, UIGI, I, I talked a little bit yesterday about uh, transitioning and uh, how I, you know, basically been conditioned a certain way. And, and so I was definitely seeking something different. And I stumbled across UIGI, uh, you know, in the process of doing my own research. And, you know, like I said yesterday, I, I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, career military, staying out of the spotlight, staying in and keeping, uh, you know, drama or, or nonsense out of my life. That was kind of my thing. So when I saw UIGI and I, I met Rabu online, you know, a lot of people have said it. Uh, there's like just something about this guy. I, I instantly had a connection. Like I could feel, you know, his heart. Uh, he's got a big heart. So why, you know, why do I want to spend time? Why did it, why did it matter to me to spend time with UIGI uh, right there? So I knew he was for us. Uh, the community was growing. The community itself, you could get, you got that vibe 
right away when you get in UIGI that uh, everyone in here uh, is for everyone in here. And, and I, I felt it. And so I knew that this was a good place to learn, uh, a good place, you know, people were winning. And so it was a no brainer for me to just, just jump in and, and, and start doing what everybody's doing, and start winning. So um, my thing is with UIGI, I've always researched investing. I always wanted to be an investor. But if you realize you have to have a lot of money to do that. And when I saw when I saw Rob Boop put out UIGI, you don't have to have a lot of money. You can get started with very little money and still make it grow. And you can make it grow on its own. You do not, you know, with network marketing, you have to have people. You don't have to do that with this. Everything I've done, most everything I've done, I can't say everything, most everything I've done with you, UIGI has been growing my money. It does take more time that way, but it works. All right, this next question, I'm gonna change it up a little bit, but it's gonna be the same question as I gave you guys earlier. Okay, how long have you been involved with our investment group? And also how long did you kind of like survey it before you started investing with us? Well, I listened to you, uh, Rabu, before, um, before I was actually, before he put this out. So I trusted him and I believed in him. So as soon as I saw it, I got in. I actually got in the, uh, his first phase before he actually put UIG out, UIGI out. So I was, I'm actually an original member, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so I said, I, you know, I was in the process of seeking. And, and when I found uh, this and this community and Rabu, you know, it was, it was instant for me. So I, I saw, I found it in December of last year uh, of 2020. Uh, like I said, in, in the process of, of really looking for something. And when I saw it, it was, it was that was it. So I jumped all in uh, real quick and, and started helping people. And, and uh, you know, to get, we'll take a little deeper. You know, if, if we think we're here, big picture for experience, uh, then, then money and, and uh, it's a tool to provide the freedom to have the most experience. And, and I saw this uh, just instantly as, as a way to just uh, accelerate that from where I was uh, to where I'm headed. So, yeah. I was already in Daisy. Um, when I met Rabu and was um, introduced to the group. Um, once I got connected to the group, there was a couple of phases such as the Amazon store and um, Amazon and Hyperfund. And two plus two equals four to me, not 17. It made sense. The promotion, the promotional information that they were giving about the results were like, amazing. So I hopped in those um, instantly and I saw growth instantly with Hyperfund. I went in at, I called him and I said, what do you think I should come in at? And then, he, you know, he gave me the rule and said, you know, I can't give you that type of information, but let me tell you what I did. So I was like, okay, I'm coming in then, right? So I hopped in there. I was super excited about it and it didn't take me long because I really respect his grind and you can't have a group of people of over 50,000 and you a faker. So eventually they would dwindle, you know, just dwindle away and he's staying consistent. So I noticed that I saw how diverse the culture was, how helpful everybody was. It was extremely intriguing and I wanted more passive income. Like that's like my thing, making money in your sleep making your office any location, whether it's the beach or the casino. And he helped with that. <laughs> I joined the group um, February, March timeframe. And um, I started investing right away. Uh, once I talked to Trace and they sort of came up with a game plan, I started investing right away because I saw the benefits to myself and to my family. Perfect. So how has this group changed your life? The 
information that we have learned along the way has definitely opened up my eyes to how things are being manipulated and how we are being manipulated. And so it definitely gave me the tools to start creating a new path for myself and helping me assist other people in discovering new ways to look at things that they're not stuck in a job that they have no other choice but to go to that there is so much more out there they just have to believe in themselves and take a step it's scary but take a step um, I think it helped me I'm really extroverted personally, but introverted because of business, or it might be the other way around, extroverted because of business, introverted personally, right? So dealing with so many different types of people, different cultures, you know, um, that exposure of kind of just learning their systems to things, I think that's what UGI brought for me is just the diversity. And um, that was extremely impactful and helpful for me. It also brought um, one phase in March because I did three going on four will bring a million dollars a month in yeah, the beginning of March. So it definitely increased my net worth, increased my income and gave me the ability to share a platform that is exclusive, that does cost a little bit of money, but sometimes you have to pay to play. And in order to pay to play, the results are gonna come massive once you do that. So of course we love the contacts turning into coins. Uh, for me, it's, it's, back, it's been pretty dramatic. Um, <laughs> on the surface, you know, it's pretty easy to say that, that it's enabled me to uh, retire from, from a JOB, right? Uh, so that's that's amazing in itself, and I'm, I'm super grateful for that. But on a, on a deeper level, it has. Uh, once I started sharing, and Simone is one of uh, one of my teammates. Once I started sharing, and and people started to see this, what it could do for them, and uh, how it impacted them. Like I said yesterday, that's kind of that light bulb that goes on. That that freedom they see freedom, and for me, that's huge. That that started to become. Uh, my bigger why is, is how many people can I help get this freedom that, that I'm now experiencing and that is just, it's so empowering. So that was huge for me. And then uh, the, I think the third thing is, is really mindset. Um, as, as for me personally, transitioning from, a, from one way of doing and looking at things to a different way, a different way to, to lead people, to grow with people, um, to uh, and, a, and a different way to impact. So uh, a, a team and, and my family, and this is, so it's been, it's been really fulfilling for me to be able to just uh, help other people get to that freedom. Like I said, for me, it's just, it's all about that. And that's, uh, yeah, it's, so it's been, it's been amazing. It's been, it's been definitely a lot life changing. So. so the immediate impact for me was two months after I, uh, we started this, I took a major pay cut because of COVID. Luckily I got to keep my job, but I took a major pay cut. So because of this, I didn't have to change my lifestyle. This took care of that pay cut. So that was the immediate impact. And, but now also, now I see a way for me to get out of that job. And I will get there, you know, pretty soon. I, I say soon, the way I'm going three to five years, but that's good for me then. It's a lot better than the next 20. <laughs> so I mean, that's, the, that's the major effect for me. All right, next question is, we all know there's two different ways to you know, do the UIGI. And there's a lot of people that are just like shy. You know, do you share this platform, these options with other people? So I am one of those people that is pretty shy when it comes to trying to explain stuff to people or talk to people or approach people. You know, that's the hardest part, approaching people for me. So I do, I'm coming out of my shell because of the group. That's helped me a lot with that too. So I try to, but as of yet, I haven't done very much sharing. So you're telling me 
you don't share these platforms and you're a ring earner? Yes, I've learned how to make the system work for me without sharing the platform. I've, I've made most of mine myself. I've had a little help along the way, but I've made most of mine myself with this right here. All right, perfect. <clears throat> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, we're all up here because we probably didn't have a huge network uh, prior to this. So for me, it uh, I I'm kind of in between the people that that I started sharing with was a real small circle. Started to get it. Um, their their inner circle people started to get it. So. I'm not uh, the type of person that's out there like, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not out there in everyone's face kind of thing. And I'm not uh, all over the interwebs uh, uh, talking about it, but the people that see it, the people that I do have influence, most of them, they know me. And, and it's like, they, they see that it's real. And when I, when I point them to the group, instantly, most of them have the same type of feeling that I got when I found the group and uh, some kind of a mix. I've got, uh, you know, we, we do have uh, four ring earners on our team. So, so it's getting out there. It's, uh, it's getting out there, but I'm still learning a lot when it comes to that space. So, uh, but I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. I have a pretty decent um, social media presence. So my folks have been following me since I was savage. So they've seen my growth. Um, you know, people don't follow you until they see results. And once they see your life speak for your, you know, speak for you, then it, it makes them align with you a lot better than you just being a good spokesperson. So, you know, I promote heavy on social media education because to me, the education foundation is important. If your mind is not right, your finances could never be right. So um, giving those opportunities come after I educate on the possibilities and they follow my lifestyle, which isn't, you know, I never show perfection. I just show a work in progress. And um, that has allowed me a really good audience that follows me and does pretty much anything that I do because they trust me. So, you know, that's one of the things that I got from Rabu was the trust factor. And that's big for me because it's extremely hard for me to trust and, it, and to also trust you with my pockets. So, you know, once I seen that, I kind of duplicated that in a sense with incorporating the things with him that built a stronger foundation for me and my network. I am one of the introverts, so I have a tendency to speak to people individually. I listen a lot, and um, that's actually how I've met some of the people that I'm assisting. I just listen to what their needs are, and a lot of them have a lot of misinformation. When you mention crypto, they're like, crypto? Some people have never heard of crypto, which I thought a little fascinating or they think it's the dark web and only the bad guys are using crypto. So as I try to bring them into this century, um, I'm more of a gentle sort of leader. I don't bludgeon. And I like the fact that many of the platforms, we don't have to have somebody underneath us. And I just talk to them. And a lot of times just casually dropping what I'm doing how it's going, the good and the bad, have had more interests and more people seeking me out because I am a non-confrontational, easy, mellow person. So then they feel much more comfortable and confident speaking to me because I'm going to be real with them. And that so far is how it's working for me. And on my small team, my aunt is my ring earner. Um, fortunately, she wasn't here today but it's nice to see the growth. And that for me is the biggest thing is to see the growth and the confidence that this platform is allowing a lot of people to have in themselves and in their future. We kind of touched base on this, but like without like going in too much detail of what we have repeated, what is the best thing you get out of UIGI for yourself? 
the diversity in the platforms. You don't have to jump in everyone. Pick the one that resonates with you and follow it. Pretty much the same, but the passive income. You know, working smart, not hard. Um, I'm really big on the supply and demand. What do you supply that's in demand? What problems do you solve? So most people's main problem is money. So how do we solve that and still allow them to live and be alive, which is a difference. So that having that opportunity to create wealth and you can do it from your bed or anywhere and it's not a cap or a gap, you know, they're really small, small starts, you know, high reward. Um, some are high risk, low reward, some are medium risk, but you have the option to pick what fits you. And that's what I like. It's like a grocery store for finance. I think for me, it's, it's about the community um, coming from, from very small community. This community is uh, definitely larger, but there are, you know, teams within teams. And, and as a, a lot of people have already said, you know, your circle matters. And if your circle matters, then uh, this is this is the circle I want to be in because everyone here is uh, one, they want to win. Uh, they want to see other people win and, and typically they are winning. So uh, if, if you got, if you want to be in a good circle, uh, this is the community. And I, I love the community part of it. Yeah, I agree with that. That's helped me come out of my shell, the community. But, you know, my biggest thing with you, IGI, and I kind of said it earlier, but you can get started in this. You don't have to know anyone. You don't have to put a bunch of people in here to make money. And to me, that is the best thing about it. What is your favorite platform overall in the whole group? Well, the one that pays me first. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite platform. Here, let's back that up then. If you could only pick one right now, which one would it be? Right now today, I would probably pick FX Winnings. But because it is, but that's a newer one for us, but that, I really like that so far. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. I'm, I'm really digging FX winning. Uh, it's solid. It's consistent. It's you, zero work. Uh, I love that part of it. So truly, truly passive. Um, but I think if I were going to choose today, I'm probably leaning toward hyper fund. Uh, another solid one been around for a while. It's going and uh, the huge community. And, th and that's another community outside this community that that's also just amazing. So I'll, I'll go hyper fund. I'm with you on that one. I pay to play. I like big numbers. Hyperfund is extremely secure. Um, five years history, not one day missed a payment. Um, their customer service and their village is really, really helpful. And I just like the three to one. The three to one, whether you do 300 or whether you do 100,000, you know you're getting paid every day for 20 months. So hyper fun for the win. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is definitely my favorite. And then I'm tossing up between FX and 7K medals. So those are the, those are my top three. All right, next question. Do you guys play by the rules of the one third rule or are you guys just high roller gamblers? <laughs> That was driven home by the demise of one. Um, I had not been actively doing it as consistently as it should have been, but now that is my rule. And that has taken a lot of stress off by playing by that. And it is the smartest way to do it. I was not doing it, okay? I got on the phone. I I DM coach, like, look, let me tell you what just happened. You know, he's very raw. Maybe not with everybody, I don't know, but I know with me, he raw. Okay, he said, well, ma'am, did you do what I told you to do? I said, what? So you don't read and you don't listen, okay? Because it's all over the page. 
So he gave it to me. I said, you know what? You're right. My bad. I'm about to get off this phone though. Cause you hurt my feelings. So after that, I did that one third rule and um, it's been working. It's been, it's been working for me. The one third rule, if you don't do it, don't whine, don't cry, don't gripe, don't have no conniption, don't put in the group, you angry. And we lost our whole life because it's not going to be our fault. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Uh, you know, again, as I was, as I'm transitioning from a, from a thing, to this other thing, uh, I was really aggressive. So, I, you know, all in, all in, all in. Uh, and then, you know, I learned a few hard lessons. And then, you know, and then I, I keep hearing, you know, Rabu says it all the time. One third rule is like, okay. So I started, I started working it a little more, uh, paid off a lot of debt. So I'm, I'm really happy about that part. And uh, yeah, so, so Richard, we need to talk after this probably about the, the, the other part, the last part of that one third rule, but yeah, uh, it definitely works. This, that system, that, that mindset, that concept. And I think it really is a mindset. It, it definitely works. So if you stick with that, you cannot lose, you cannot lose. So when I first started, I was on a mission to build as fast as I could. I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of people. The way to do it was to have money. So that's what I did. But now, now that I've got it built up, I am moving towards the one third rule. So we're going to wind this down real quick here, but still got a couple more questions. How do we want to put this one? We'll just wrap it up with just why don't you give one tip how a new person in the industry because what do I get from you know talking to you guys I've been in the industry for over 15 years and I've recruited more people than the yellow page you know <laughs> and this is my first ring I've earned you know so what I get from you guys you have no history of network marketing much you know and you have reached this level well we only been around for 14 months so you know less than 14 months some of you guys less than a year you know what was, what's one tip you know you give anybody that's looking at this that says hey you don't have to be that superstar that's on facebook 24 7 on the phone you know if you're going to build this and share this with people what's one tip you could you know give out to people well the easiest answer get started you know everybody can start at different levels so you know, start where you can, but the money is going to work for you. Even if you have to get in the small, we have something you can get in for 50 to 100. We have, you know, you can put a thousand in, but get started where you can, because that's the most important part. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say it, uh, but I remember uh, Rochelle, I think, said it best. She says, like, just don't wait, don't sit on this. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to know everything. And, you know, this, there are so many platforms in, in this, in this uh, book club that, and there's so much information uh, that you, you know, most of us can't learn it all in a day or a week or probably even a year. I'm still learning every single day, um, but you don't have to know it all. And that's another thing I love about the community is there's so much help. So jump in, get in where you can and get started uh, because it, you know, it grows so fast. We've all said it, uh, you know, so just, just go. I think everybody is a student continuously. I think procrastination is the key to being unsuccessful. And you don't have to have a million dollars. You have to have a million dollar mindset. And sometimes just changing the people that are around you will change the trajectory of your thought process and how you build wealth or generate wealth. So if you're around five broke people, you already know you're going to be the six. If you're around 10 wealthy people, you know you're going to be number 11. So just stick with the grow and go process. And um, starting, the only time you fail is when you don't start. And that's what I live by. As everyone has said, you need to start. But don't compare yourself. Don't put yourself up to somebody else who can do $10,000 or 100,000, only concentrate on you. If 100 is all you can do, put your 100 and build from there. Build slow, build fast, but do something. Don't just talk about it, do something. All right, final question. You know, due to the fact of my history, yeah, we'll just be fast. Okay, you guys all been here for a year. 
in most all the business I ever did in a year, there's four people up here. You guys would be gone the first 12 months. What keeps you around? The diversity. Different options. Freedom's contagious. Different options and I'm still making money. So that's the easy answer. Perfect. Well, appreciate you guys coming up here. You know, great job this first year with us and, and can't wait to see where everybody grows in the next, you know, 10, 15 years. We're not going nowhere. This is good. This is good. This is good. Again, a whole different perspective. You know, heard some things that you probably weren't expecting to hear. Heard some things that you were expecting to hear. This is good. And we're on time. All right. We don't tell you, y'all did a phenomenal job. Okay, so the next show I'm going to bring up, um, you know, I, I introduced him yesterday, and, you know, and everybody's in the room. So, you know, talk to him yesterday, but in the interest of time, you know, is a gentleman who he and his wife, they are one of our powerful phases, which is mortgage notes. Again, we don't know how long crypto is going to be here, but as we make this crypto money, it's great to park it in a place that's going to continuously make us money. Put your hand together. Bamad has <laughs> Bamad Hazel. Let's give him a real big hand. I tried it. It ain't work. I give up. That's the mindset of 90% of the people that call themselves entrepreneurs. Step one is I tried it. It ain't work and I give up. And the problem is that most people quit way too soon. They give up way too soon. My wife and I, we were real estate investors and we had a nice gig going on. She was the boss and I was her employee. So when we went to a home to talk to the homeowner to get the contract, she would boss me around, right? We had this set up like that. So the, the female homeowner would say, girl, you big as he is, you telling him what to do? She said, that's right. She was like, go get my clipboard, go get the camera, go get this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And because of that psychology, she always got the contract signed. So we went on over a thousand appointments. We got 135 deals closed. That's around a 13% close rate. That's huge in the real estate space because we did a lot of we made a lot of money that way. Something happened. It's called burnout. We were sleeping with the 15 inch monitor in between us in the bed because we were printing letters to send the homeowners all night long. So with a big, huge 15 inch monitor in the bed, you know there was no husband wife relationships going on. We were working around the clock. She said to me, I quit. I give up. I said, you give up? Give up what? The marriage? Because we could stop this right now, right? <laughs> she said, no to business. She said, I can't do it any longer. So I went to one of our mentors and I said, we quit. He said, what do you mean you quit? He said, the Hazels are doing so many deals, you guys should be the bank. And then that second, God spoke to me. I felt like I got struck in the back of my head by a bolt of lightning. And I looked at Rochelle and I said, what does that mean? So something just happened to me. I don't know what it was, but what does that mean? On the way home, 
we talked about what it would mean to be the bank. And we didn't really understand. We just was vibing with each other. And when we got home, I said, babe, I don't know what this really means, but I'm gonna try to figure it out. Let me explain to you what happened though. And I wanna kind of keep the story short. There's a lot in between. We could talk about it later, but let me tell you what it really means. So the bank, their primary product is a mortgage. That's their primary product. So when the bank loans money, the first document that is signed is a promissory note. It is a promise to repay the debt. We say note for short. And we use a misnomer, we say mortgage note. But those are two separate documents, right? So the promissory note is the promise to repay a debt. The bank says, we will sell this debt. Here's what's key. They will sell the debt at a discount. Now, let me tell you about the skeptics. The skeptics say, why would the bank do that? That can't be true. The bank is smarter than you. They sell it at a discount because they write it off for insurance money. All loans are FDIC insured up to $250,000. The bank is smarter than you are. So they will write that debt off and they will sell that debt. Now here's what's huge. They may take a debt like $250,000 on a home and they may write that off and sell it to me for $25,000. But the homeowner still owes me the $250,000. So then I come and I sell that debt to Rob Boo for $100,000 in 24 hours. So I know he like crypto. Yeah, I know he like crypto. We like fast money, we like easy money. I'm giving you the blueprint for easy money. There's another way. The challenge is it takes some time to kind of learn how this works. And it takes some time to recondition your mind. That's the challenge that we have in working with people, that it takes some time to recondition the belief system because a lot of questions start to come up that are fear-based questions. Well, my mother said, money don't grow on trees and my mother would never lie to me. <laughs> and I would say, maybe your mother didn't know how to plant a money tree. Cause there's a lot of money trees around. If you start to ask and inquire, there are a lot of money trees around. There are a lot of money trees in this room. There are a lot of people in this room that know money trees. One huge money tree is sitting right here. When I say that, I'm talking about his brain. His brain is right here. Because if you, if you approach him the right way and say the right things, he'll say, oh, I know who can get that done for you. Oh, I know who can make that happen for you. He's the money tree. It don't always have to be in currency. It don't always have to be in, you know, me providing, you know, financial stuff. His brain. When he and I first talked, he's like, we were kind of going back and forth. He's like, oh man, this is really making a lot of sense to me. He's like, but how do you, and how does, and how does this happen? And I was explaining to him, I get these questions all the time. He said, boy, I got it. He said, I know just who you need to talk to. He said, I know bankers. He said, I'm gonna go talk to them for you. He's the plug. He's the one that got us here. He's the one that built a 50,000 member group. 
but your brain has to change. So my wife and I, we said, how can we, we were making a lot of money. We said, how can we help people? How can we help people? How can we help the homeowners? So we're helping homeowners, helping homeowners. Let me tell you one way we help homeowners. So we may buy a deal from a bank and we look at the dynamics of the, of the deal and we see that there's a homeowner, Mrs. Jones, she's 70 years old. For whatever reason, she had to refinance her mortgage. So she now has a 30 year mortgage. I look at my wife, we don't have to have no board meeting or nothing. I look at my wife and I say, let's give Ms. Jones a release of lien. And we release her lien and make her loan paid in full. That's how we help. What's the likelihood that she's gonna be able to, if she's 70, what's the likelihood that she's gonna be able to pay, pay that off? I got it from the bank at a discount. I don't have to make money on everything. We can give back. We can help people. There's a problem though. It's just me and her. We need all of you to get on board so we can help more people. So if I buy your mortgage, and your mortgage, you owe 250,000, guess what? And with the snap of a finger, I can say, babe, let's drop this down to 75 grand. We are not losing nothing. Cause I'm gonna take that mortgage and sell it right to Rabu. And Rabu will take it and he gonna sell it to somebody else. And it's gonna keep going around and around and around, but that homeowner is gonna benefit significantly from a reduced mortgage. That's why we do what we do. We've made over the years, you wouldn't believe it, tons of money, but we've helped tons of people too. And there's a learning curve. There's some things you have to understand. There's some things you gotta release from your heart, right? Education wise, you gotta level up some but it's, we've made it simple for anybody to understand. You just have to have a banker's mindset. Really quickly, I wanna go over a hierarchy of the real estate business. So there's 14 levels in the real estate business. Level number one is what we call the bird dog. The bird dog is a person that goes out and they find leads for a real estate professional. Level two is the wholesaler. Rochelle and I were wholesalers. We would go out, get the deal under contract and sell it to another investor. Level three is the realtor or the loan officer. So that's the lowest tier. That tier is what we call the brokers. Then you have the homeowners and the house flippers, right? Those are what we call the owners. You got the landlord and the real estate cash buyers, right? This, these are the people that now own the property. You got people that are tax liens, tax lien buyers and auction buyers. Again, they own the property. You got multifamily and commercial developers. They're building structures. They own stuff. But then you have the controllers. The, the controllers are the private lenders, people that lend money for people to buy homes. You have the note investors. These are the people that buy the paper, like me and Rochelle. You have the fund managers, and the REIT investors. Rochelle and I are both fund, manager, fund managers of three funds. Next, you have the bank president and then the Federal Reserve. 
So look how close Rochelle and I are at the top. So when another bank calls us, they see us as a bank. They talk to us as bankers. And you wouldn't believe what's being sold. High rise buildings, bridges, commercial development projects, everything below on that scale, the bank is selling. America is for sale. Everything is for sale. Churches, synagogues, Rochelle and I bid on a bank, the Bank of Wisconsin. They were selling us eight branches. They had over $160 million in cash and assets. And they was offering us the bank for $8 million. We got outbid by $500,000. At the last minute, somebody came in and bid 8.5. So this collective that the master has put together, right? This is what is what he's he's pushing for. This is what he contacted us about and said, hey, with all this going on, can we collectively begin to get our money up so we can begin to buy things on a larger level and inherit? This, this legacy for our individual families. Can we inherit that? I said, I'm with you, bro, all the way. Tell me what I need to do. My wife and I were selling this course that we, we have for UIGI for 25,000. Rabu said, nah, bro. He said, nah. He said, gotta be something, you gotta give me something else. I said, bro, I don't know, I don't know what to say because this, this is what we do. He said, no, nah, man, I need something special for my people. He said, drop the price, bro. And I was like, and Rabu, my man, he ready to cause beef early on in our relationship. <laughs> he get ready to cause beef early on in our relationship. And I got to thinking, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't answer him for a while. You know, I was feeling some kind of way. And then finally I said, bro, you win. When we drop in the price, you 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 name the price. So I think we'll be good around this level. I said, okay, it's done. So that's what we're trying to do collectively, get the mindset up so that we can begin to buy something huge and inherit something huge so that everybody in here can experience a legacy that lasts a long time. And I'll just conclude by saying this that I talked with an investor one time. First of all, let me, let me, before I say what he said, if you don't know, I'm black. And to be in this space, to be in this space is rare and extremely difficult because I'm the premier mortgage note investor buyer in the country, and I'm black. So I get a lot of pushback from bankers, lawyers, and we, 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 know, we know what happens, right? So it's okay. So an investor said to me, we were debating over the price on a deal. He was buying a multifamily note deal from us. He wanted it at uh, 45 million. We were selling it at 47 million. So I gave it to him and he left it's cutting into my profit. So he agreed to the price point. And he said, um, at the end of the deal, I asked him, I said, why'd you agree to the price point? because it was a pretty heated battle. And he said, you people, it's cool, right? Because I'm mature. He said, you people do deals for Friday night. 
He said, my people, we do deals for 100 years from now. Now, I could either be upset with him or I could learn from him. And I'm all about learning. I said, I'm gonna learn that. That's, that's, that's hot, right? Forget the insult, right? I'm mature, right? That's hot. And then I met an Indian dude who told me, he said, my family has been wealthy for a thousand years. That's even hotter. Wow, a thousand years? He said, bro, I can give you the whole family lineage for a thousand years. Can we build that? We can build that. Thank you for giving me the, the, the thought that I can reach a thousand year generation. Whatever it takes, whatever struggle Rochelle and I have had to go through, there's been many. Tears, arguments, right? It battles in the house, right? What happened? What happened with this deal? What happened with the money? Like all kinds of stuff you wouldn't believe. We not speaking, sleeping back to back, right? Three o'clock in the morning, business meeting over something crazy. But we've gone through all of those pains and struggles so that we can deliver it to you and that you can benefit and have a thousand year legacy for your, your family. Rabo, thank you so much. Appreciate you, bro. It's bigger than UIGI. I'll say this, you know, as we bring up the next crew. Um, okay. Sherry, like, that's my mentor. That's my friend. And Sherry and I find ourselves in a situation, I think I told you this on Facebook, that, you know, we were in foreclosure for a second, right? I don't know if anybody's ever been in foreclosure, you know. But we were in foreclosure for a second. And we got to a point where I called our man. I was like, look, man, you know, we, 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 we trying to get out this foreclosure thing, so on and so forth. And we told him how much we owed. And these jokes was talking about coming and putting a thing on the house and selling the house. He said, send him 179000 And we owe 400000 He said, send him 179000 I was a little scared to send him 179000 because I thought they were going to reject it. But we gave, we gave the mortgage company, a huge mortgage company. We offered them 279. I was just a little scared to do the 179, I'm being honest with you. They came back at like three something. We were like, deal, mortgage is gone. But we owed them 400 plus thousand. We said, oh, I know that mortgage company. I know that bank, send them this. When you're connected with somebody on the inside, that's a big deal. The knowledge you learn from taking their course, that's a big deal. We're playing with money on a higher level. Look, I did the, the, the breakdown all the way up to the bankers, to, to the Federal Reserve. They're like tier three. Where, where can you find that connection? Tell me. This is heavy duty. All right. So next group we're about to bring up, um, I like to call them the OGs. Okay, because you've heard some stories of people who've been in this industry for 20, 30 years plus, so on and so forth. So you know they have a lot of knowledge to give. All right, so put your hands together for the OGs of UIG, UIGI. Can you guys hear me? Cool. Good.
to start with Bill. All right. What's going on, gentlemen? This is going to be great. Um, one of the things about UIGI, and Rabu just touched on it, is um, having access, right? And being connected and putting yourself in a position to be connected to various types of people. And um, as a result of being part of UIGI, as a part of being a part of UIGI, I've been able to personally be able to connect it to a large group of people that I was, I was able to learn from and then being able to build some relationships with these gentlemen here, and you guys are gonna hear their stories and uh, we'll just jump right into it. And I'm excited about this, this session right here. All right, so, um, you know, so these are, as Rabu, Rabu mentioned, our, our OG has been in the game for a while, made a lot of money, a lot of money. So let's start here. So um, we'll just go right around, whoever wanna start. Um, so how, if you don't mind, just tell me how was things prior to um, prior to getting started with any business, wherever you started, whether that was MLM, becoming just business owners, whatever the case may be, and um, what what led you to where you are right now? Awesome, good question. Um, first of all, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, first thing I want to do is I got to apologize to Rabu real quick. I got here like right at ten a.m. this morning. And the way I was raised in this industry is if you're not 10 minutes early, you're actually late. So when we would come to events like this, we knew as leaders that it wasn't going to be any fun time. We're going to be at a resort where you ain't going to get to see the bar. You're going to be setting up all night. Well, there's a pool. You ain't going to get a chance to swim. We're going to have a meeting after the meeting, a leadership meeting at 2 a.m. This is how we cut our teeth. <laughs> so... Technically, in my mind, I was late because Brandy had me up all night. <laughs> I don't know what it is about y'all ladies. When you get out the house, you get in the hotel room. She's talking about putting your feet up on her. I'm like, I'm 50 something years old. What you talking about? <laughs> I'm overweight. Been up all night. Whistle pig. <laughs> I had no breakfast. I had to cancel breakfast because I'm like, we got 15 minutes, baby, to get downstairs. She's like, well, 15 minutes, I could take five, ten of them. I'm like, hey, <laughs> we got kids, grown kids at home. You need to, when we get to hotels, I don't know what that tiger spirit is kicking y'all. What was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to apologize to me. Don't run out. Don't run out. I'm so sorry, but what was the question? <laughs> hey, look. Hey, look. This is gonna be this is gonna be great and fun, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh man. What was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm at sleep in somebody else's room. <laughs> we got two more nights up in this mug. Back hurting, my knees shot. I'm sorry. Man. Um, oh man. Now the question is, um, tell me how things were prior to where you currently are right now. I uh, got you. Well, I was actually introduced to the industry uh, 30 something years ago by my pastor. Um, several of you probably heard of Creflo Dollar, and this is way before. You know, we were setting up chairs in a school. This is way before the, the church, before the dome was built and all that stuff. And so for me, my background, even though I'm crazy as all outdoors, is actually ministry. And so for me, it was a, a normal life. And when I say this, it's, it's, it kind of mixes. I've always been a believer. So I've been a believer from a faith standpoint. And so when I went to a meeting, and saw a gentleman that reminds me of Rabu standing on the stage uh, named Delzino Wilson Debriano back in the day, screaming, we're going to make so much money. I couldn't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was a normal life. I was fully involved, fully engaged in my ministry. I've always been a servant. I was shy. I was the guy that literally would post up in the back. And I was a watchdog. I never wanted to be in the front. And... So it was a normal life, but I went to a meeting, I tried a product, and that product worked. So I went to another meeting after that, and the speaker didn't show up, 
and somebody asked me to come up and give my testimony. Mm. Well, I can, to me, there's a big difference between a scam artist and a true salesman. A true salesman wants a win-win situation for you as the client or the customer and for themselves. A hustler or a scam artist is simply looking to scam you. So you can be eloquent in speech, you know, you can look good and all of that and be a scam artist. So because I was shy in the product work, I would have never went up there, gave my testimony. And then somebody else asked me to come to their meeting, give my test. Had they asked me to come do a meeting, I wouldn't have never been in this industry. But they said, give your testimony. I said, I could do that. And that was simple for me. So, so I want to just stop. So, so you mean to tell me your success started by way of giving a testimony? Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. Mm. Most right. definitely. So, you know, just a simple lifestyle, I was a believer. And uh, whatever the person on the front of the stage would say, I just fully believed it. And then I was willing to do what it took to get to that level. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Same question. You want respect my up there. <laughs> Gray hair is kicking in. Facts tell and stories sell. That's the key. And stories go way back. I was blessed. Uh, thank you, mom and dad. Um, my mom's from Germany, and uh, I'm from Detroit. My dad was from Detroit, so I'm black and white. And <laughs> seriously, <laughs> it's true. I, I, I'm a referee. I'm a referee. Okay. So I, I used to sit there and grow, going through school, I, I can hit both sides. You know, it's kind of neat. But I've seen a lot. So I've seen the white side of growing up, and, and, and then I've seen the black side of growing up. And then I'm also part Indian. But the thing was, is there was a dream way back then. And I saw growth. And one of the things that got me was I was ambitious from my parents. I learned so much. I wanted to strive to be better, be the best. You know, I respect my parents like you wouldn't believe. But the thing was is that I never forget. I went and got the paper routes. And then I um, always hung around the most successful people I could find. Started at a young age. And one of the kickers was I, one of my buddies from high school swimming at his house all the time and doing everything during the summer after high school. And all of a sudden it was, uh, he came home happy. I was like, dude, what are you excited about? Well, I found this business. Well, tell me, he goes, I don't know what to, I don't know what it's about. Come on Sunday. I go, I'm here every day. I'm here at your house every day. Just tell me. And he couldn't. So then he took me to a meeting or one-on-one, I should say. And I went to a, a meeting and I'm like, I went and I saw this guy on stage with people, about 500 people in the room. And I saw that guy speaking. I'm like, if he could do it and he's a millionaire, I could do it too. Amen. And just what do I got to do? And I always strive to grab hold of the most successful person in any arena I was in and duplicate that. And if I got hired with a job and there was somebody that was okay, I'm like, who's the top? Who's the top? And I wanted to mirror and learn from them to become the best I could be. You know, um, when you take a look, look at it, for me, it's always been relationships. See, I was a hustler from out of my mom's womb. We didn't have anything, right? So when you was taught work ethic to come down and you was authentic, it was conversations. See, what happens is I was introduced to the industry at 19. I'm 44. And at 20, um, I made my first six figures. And at 28, I became an asset millionaire. And two months before my 30th birthday, I was swimming in a bathtub with a million dollars cash. That was always a dream. No water. I was like, the, the money's going to die and it's going to get on, on my clothes. That thing was dry as can be. But the fact of the matter was, I joined the military, certain situation, but I was able to travel the world. So Germany... All three of my kids were born over there. Um, and I was able to be in, because of the job I had, I was able to go to different countries every other weekend. And so the biggest thing was I learned rejection early on. Nine people tell me no, one person tells me yes. And so the thing was, is I never tried to sell anything. I just tried to share a blessing. I came from nothing. Let me show you how I got here at such a young age. And so it was always about relationships first, then partnerships, and then businesses that we formed. And then we shared 
generational wealth now. And we're just keeping it growing. For, for me, I got in this industry. Believe it or not, my wife got me in this industry. She said, we're having a lady come over and give us a presentation. And it was a primary presentation. I said, whoo, she came over. But what got me was this ring. Not this one, but she had this ring. I was like, Barbara Williams. i never forget her name. And then she invited us to a uh, convention. My wife didn't go. I went to the convention. And that just blew me away. See all the people on stage, just like me, succeeding. And they said, you can do it. And I said, okay, okay. And then I said, if they can do this, I can do this too. And that was it. I was hooked. That was 1994. Now, here's the kicker, though. I never made any money. What's this? 30 years, company after company after company. But I enjoyed the relationships, the personal development, and I just was hooked. And, and that was it. Stop. Wow. Well, first of all, my name is Kim. <laughs> I'm from Philly, and uh, I used to sell Craftmatic adjustable beds, so I was in sales, and I had a gentleman that was there with me, and he was my friend, and he said um, to me, he said, would I support him because he was at an event, and he was excited about what he was getting ready to get, and he talked about a checking account which my life was just twisted. And when he said that, he was getting a checking account. Would I come out there and support him? I said, sure. And I just went out there to support him. That was it. But before, a week before, my boss told me I had a mandatory meeting. I'm 40 years old at that point. I said, I got a what? He said, you got a mandatory meeting. And I said, what if I don't come? Because he was a, he was like from another country. And I was like, what if I don't come? He said, I would take the food off your kid's plate. Ooh. That was it. When I went to that event, I sat there. There were three questions asked. What if you could live in the house you really want to live in? That wasn't it. What if I could drive a car I really wanted to drive? That wasn't it. He asked the third question. What if you could fire your boss? Wow. Wow. I've been running in this game ever since. That's awesome. 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 <laughs> So now I want to kind of set the tone here just a little bit. I'm not, I'm not uh, one to try to get in anybody's pockets, but I would like to know prior to UIGI, um, what would you describe as your, your single best day, week, month, or yearly income, if you don't mind sharing that, that you've been able to earn in the, in the, in the MLM space prior to coming over to UIGI? <sighs> 1.3 mil. That was the no 1.3 day, week, year. That was the year. That was okay. It was three thousand dollars in a day. Okay. That was it. <laughs> uh, I averaged thirty to forty thousand a week, and then I met Brandy. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> they got they got more rooms up in the, in the registration. <laughs> uh, you said prior to yeah prior to you uh, yeah. Uh, probably seven point six mil. Hmm. 
2013 was my best year. Um, but now, see, the thing is, is it's crazy because when when I came into, uh, I did 516 thousand this year in one day mm. in the crypto world because and and it was off a pig. It was a coin. It was a coin I bought with nine zeros and a and a one at the end. And one night, the ATH hit, and four zeros popped off. Wow. And that joker in my back office, I got a picture of it so I can show any of you. And it was, and in my group, I had ladies that never made money, make 40000 that night. And I had so many doubters that was in their back office showing a hundred grand, but you had to put the slippage up to 50%. And they were like, I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna lose 50,000, but you only put 500 in. <laughs> and then when it didn't happen the next morning, when I did my picture, they're like, what did you do? I went to 50% slippage. It was a million on the table. I took half and, but that was with, the growth because I was retired, just doing brick and mortar, doing my cars. And then when I came to UIG with Rabu, when we sat down that one night, that was making pretty good daily money. And as everybody say, it's a, a rotten phase. I pulled three quarters of a million out the system. So whatever was left in the system, that wasn't lost. That was a lesson. So prior, um, I would say network marketing over all those years, and here's what's interesting, the diversity of the different companies and different opportunities. And the opportunities that I shared, I guess mine was the education that I got out of the whole system. That was my college, you know, because I started when I was uh, about 21. And then the most success that I had was about 100 grand a year for a couple of years, and then the companies folded. So then I went to another company, and they folded. So I was like your average person, but I was trying to strive to get to the top. And right when that door was right about to open it up, then it, things changed. Mm -hmm. So then I got ticked off and I said, you know what? Plus the biggest thing that hurt me was I couldn't bring people along because I believed in them more than they believed in themselves, but the system let them down or the company. So then what ended up happening is I let go of the industry and I, I went on my own because of all the belief I had. And I went into the Visa MasterCard business and now, you know, talking residual income, I created myself. It's uh, you know, quarter million year plus. And I had a goal to make, to be, I'll be a seven figure income with it. And then I ran into Rabu with projects. I'll, I'll put it that way. But when it was UG, UIGI and I knew nothing about crypto, that's why I said, well, let me watch what he does. You know, because I've seen too much stuff where it goes like this and what goes up comes down. But this one was just slow roll and then bolting on more, more, more portfolios, more programs. And then when the mortgage notes came through, I'm like, hmm, because I had tied it. it I did uh, my first 12 years in corporate America was um, what do you call uh, title insurance. And I loved getting into realtors face because I go, you got all this status living in L.A. All right. And I go, but you don't have any residual freaking income. So get out of my face. I make more than you, you know, because it's just a status out there. But now, thanks to that program, boy, we're going to do some things. So I'm looking forward to what's going on here with crypto. Obviously, I'm green to some of the experience. But from the tenure standpoint, there's a lot of people that want to overcome. And the money that could be made, whew, looking forward to it. And Thank you. And that, that's going to tie right into my next question. Um, you kind of you kind of touched on it. Um, I don't know. Maybe you might want to expand uh, expand upon it a little bit. But um, being that all of you all uh, are successful, worse, and uh, prior to uh, coming along at UIGI, what attracted you to UIGI? Why UIGI? It was definitely the diversity, and then it was something where you could start off by yourself. And my thing was I can always count on myself. I'm sure all the rest of it's like that too. But I could grow it and I can be an example. And if I can win first, then I could teach it. 
you know, be an example. And that's what I want to do to be example. And I learn from the best. I shut up and listen. Always been a student. Always been a student. I can learn from everybody, even everybody in this room. I'm going to pick up one thing from you. When I went to seminars, my books might just have a phrase in there. Might just have a sentence. And that could change my life. And it could change yours or the change the next person that I talk to. So what's that sense? Well, mine was real simple. Um, when I had the conversation with Rabu, it's the same thing. Like when I look at him, we have a lot of similar things in our backgrounds. We've hustled forever in the game. And being a military man, um, there was a slogan that was taught to me a long time ago. You can't really be nice to folks in the industry because they don't listen. So when we're downrange dodging bullets, I can't say, hey, would you get down? The bullets are coming. <laughs> they used to tell me, Sayad, sit your ass down and hold on for dear life. And then I heard that over here and it was real simple. But the fact of the matter was when I got with Rabu, it was like, I had everything I wanted. My kids are straight, but the fact was UIG had a system. I already got people. I don't need people. I got people to talk to all day. But when I looked at the capture page and I looked at, you could just send people. I'm like, I'm used to belly belly recruiting. Hey, let's go have a coffee. Let's talk. Let me get your number. And I'm like, really? You're going to bring me out of retirement? He said, look, buy this promo page and then just send it out in a blast email and wait for them to come to you. You don't have to go to McDonald's and buy the meal to the car behind you no more. And then when I saw that, he's got two daughters too, right? And I watched that generational wealth is what it is for me and wealth preservation, leaving the legacy for our kids and their kids. And when I looked at it, <clears throat> somebody said, your two best friends, it's not socials and names and emails. Why can't you teach a 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old crypto and Forex? And it's on a decentralized block. And I said, hold on. And then we can, the biggest thing what I got out of a conversation with Robert one day, he said, with the little money, you can show them four phases. You can show them $150 into what? Daisy. And you can put something small into Hyperfund. Now we can go into um, MetaTrader 5. And then you pick one more. So somebody that's so green, they're so afraid of losing, you got four chances. That's a 25% chance. Who's not going to come gamble with UIGI? So I listened to Fat Joe say the other day on Versus, yesterday's price is not today's price. Come get your ring. Okay. Yes, sir. I remember Saya. I like that. I like that. But I'm malnourished, so I don't remember the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm, they got an awesome pastrami sandwich at that restaurant down there. <laughs> now, um, so given the fact that all of you gentlemen up here are widely successful prior to um, being introduced to UIGI, the question is why UIGI? Why? And I think you said and how. And, all. and, for, and for me, I kind of told that story uh, when I came to get my ring. But uh, it was almost like two comets attracting, not knowing they were coming at each other. Mm -hmm. And then we just collided. Like I said, it was like I was looking for something that was looking for me at the same time. And that wasn't just Rabu, that was UIGI. -I. And uh, being an MLM full time for so long, multi level marketing is just, it's, it's literally a self development course with a compensation plan. And if there's one thing I love, because I had gotten to the point where I had a love hate with what I love, which is multi level marketing. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, Brandy's like, you know, you were doing a presentation in your sleep. Ooh. Literally, she said, you were snoring, but you would stop snoring. Started, we'll see you on the second level. You got, <laughs> I'm serious. So I love the industry, but I started. It's something, it was something in my gut. Mm -hmm. I was just getting tired. And I realized, because I say it all the time. I was tired of leveraging people. Mm. 
I was tired of begging people. I was tired of believing in people more than they believed in themselves. I was tired of driving eight hours to a no-show. It was part of the game I was groomed for, but I was tired of all of that. I drove, I drove uh, seven hours to a meet one time by myself. Uh, it was a no-show. That's common. That's part of the game. But the, the person whose house I went to was so embarrassed. She ran next door and got her aunt to come sit on the front. She had all these chairs. I told her not to do none of that. It looked like an Amway me when I walked in, John. And so it's a no-show. So I have to watch my face. I have to watch my reaction because you could break a new person's spirit. They're like, I have Mr. Brown. You know, I ain't Mr. Brown, but you know, in the industry, I have Mr. Brown driveway out here and nobody came. And you can ruin somebody's career by the next thing that comes out of your mouth or your attitude. So I do all my cussing when I get in the car. But she ran next door, got her aunt, sat her in the front row. And then her aunt's husband, which was her drunk uncle, was looking for his wife and busted up in the meeting, you know, where my wife at, you know, he sat on the front row and he signed up four ninety five mm. because what I did was, and I learned this from ministry. I watched Pastor Dollar, and I'm answering the question. I watched Pastor Dollar. We traveled. Our first convention was a hundred years ago. He travels the world now, offices everywhere. Our first convention was Birmingham, Alabama. Loaded up, drove there. We were so excited and nobody showed up. Ooh. Nobody showed up to come here past the dollar. And I'm in the back, you know, making sure he's straight, making him look up, make sure no boogers in his nose. I told you I was a real servant, right? And he walked out there. I'm thinking we're going to pack it up. We're going to go eat. I'm like, all right, let's go eat. There ain't nobody out there. So he's finishing up makeup and the whole night. He walked out on that stage and preached like it was 1,500 people, 15,000 people in the audience. And when he walked back off the stage, there were so many all moments that I had. All I could do was, I just, I'm sitting at him because I'm waiting to hear what's, what he's finna say. We're in the back. And he said, the spirit told him that the angels are in every seat wow. and to preach like the arena is full and you'll never preach to an empty seat again. Wow. Mm. So I applied that lesson to my MLM business. And so I, you're never moved by the audience. It doesn't matter how many people. It doesn't matter if somebody falls asleep on you. You don't get offended. You continue with that seven-step effective presentation. And the drunk uncle sign up. I had people fall asleep on me, wake up and sign up because you're focused on the mission. But I started falling out of love with all that. I don't know what it was. And I started looking for a system. Long story short, uh, somebody told me about UIGI. I'm low tech, but I know before I even think about reaching out to this man, I need to be plugged in. See, so many people want to use up, take up your time and ask you all these questions, but are you plugged in? Did you get positioned? The pitcher's not going to throw the ball until the catcher squats down and get in position. Mm -hmm. So many people don't get their blessings because they're not in position to receive from God. And it's the same thing in the financial realm. Are you in position? So with my low tech self, I signed up in every single platform and I had the nerve to ask him a question and he actually replied. This is all on, on, uh, on uh, what's the inbox thing on Facebook, Facebook Messenger. So he, and, and then he was asking me, but he was like, well, who introduced you? Because he wanted to make sure he wasn't cross recruiting. So my decision's already made. I'm, I'm rolling with you. I'm already signed up. And then he was hitting me with these other questions. I said, I said, I said uh, Mr. Gary, that's too many questions for me to type. I'm low tech. Is there any way we can talk next week or whatever? And he rung my face. He said, I never do this. And so for me, it was just a gravitational pull. When I saw what the, what the organization was about, what the thought pattern was, it was a wrap for me. I mean, I could talk on and on about that because it's almost like it happened yesterday for me. So uh, I hope that answered the question. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. For me, the reason I joined or what attracted me, uh, attracted me to it, anybody could do it. It was easy. Didn't require me to, I guess, talk to a lot of people because I got tired of dragging people along. They're not being successful. The reason I think they weren't successful, looking back on it, you don't know what people do when they're not in your presence when they go home they're looking at 
TV, I would say, or whatever unproductive things they might be doing, why they wouldn't come along and be successful after you poured and poured and poured into people. And so that's what it was. I didn't have to uh, drag people along. It's just easy, anybody could do it. <laughs> you GI, oh, you are GI. You are GI. <laughs> Rabu is my friend. Me and Rabu would just talk. Rabu would say what he was going to do. I tell him, oh, that's what's up. I'm going to look at it. He would just, that's it. And at the end of the day, when you take all of these things, he says, there's one statement, Danny Johnson, who's my mentor, coach, remember, right? <laughs> your income will never exceed your personal development. Your income, I don't care what it is, your income will never exceed your personal development. And once I learned that, my other coach, Myron Golden, that the, just there, there's, there's things that you hear and Les Brown will say, I ain't gonna say nothing you ain't heard before. Hopefully this time it resonates with you. Mm -hmm. But it has to resonate. I ain't gonna say it, but you've heard it. We've seen it, right? So when I look at UIGI, every principle, when you look at what we're talking about, residual income, you ask him, his mentor, you look at this guy, everybody knows him, Holton Bugs. Everybody knows him. You listen to Holton, Holton does. He said, guys, I done spent 50 million on a piece of property. How many of y'all know what the last property he purchased in real estate? We're sitting on that property right now. Ooh. Huh? Okay. They wrote him a check. He could, like, you got why you IGI? Who followed him? Who do you follow? At the end of the day, when you look at UIGI, if you don't follow, and at the end of the day, I don't tell nobody what to do anyway. Mm -hmm. I like to have fun. I'm a fun guy. All I do is travel and have fun. What you doing? Man, oh my God. How the heck you gonna go on an eight-day cruise, $284? You wanna hang out with me? That's all I did. It just makes sense, period. And at the end of the day, then who's he following? Jeremy. Who's his, who do he follow? Anybody know Jeremy? Daisy. U-I-G-I. -I. Daisy. How much would it cost you to go into Indotech? $125,000, you had $10 million, you had to have a million dollars worth of cover just to get in. And look at this, because of connections, connections. Who's the pay set, pay set a leader? Kemp Satchel. Did you see what big, did you see Daisy this morning? Yeah. Hello, did anybody see Daisy this morning? Yeah. Did y'all check it out? If you didn't, you might wanna go and look. <laughs> Daisy, <laughs> you, let's take a look. A hundred and what? Hundred and four percent. Why you are GI? <laughs> Come on, why not? Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. So, um, next question. Maybe we can make this a twofold thing. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, being you know attaining the level of success that you all have had, there's been and some ups and downs mm -hmm. on this road. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, number one, is if you don't mind or if you just want to either share a, 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 an experience that was, um, uh, I don't want to say like a bad experience, but, um, you know, something, a, a challenge, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Share a challenge, how you overcame that challenge, right? And then maybe that ties into the uh, second question, which is now how does that, prepare you in terms of any success, um, any success habits that you would like to share with the, share with us here today? Personal development. 
I don't have to say nothing else. Personal development. I won't say nothing else. Personal development. Every morning, for me, I do a personal development call. Every morning. And when you look at that, you read, like we're reading every day. Just like you work out. I can tell you work out every day. No matter what, personal development is everything, babe. When you look at it, I don't care how you look at it. Life is nothing but lessons and tests. Once you pass that test, you don't have the lesson. Until you pass the test, and some are more costly than others. And at, that, at the end of the day, there ain't nothing that can shake me up. I don't get messed up. My mindset, like, I don't get into arguments with my wife. We don't have to look at stuff like what's the negative, what's the, I don't do none of that stuff. Man, life is just, and the easier life is, the easier you will attract money into your life. When you get that pitfall and you got all these grudges, you stop your income. Yes, sir. Yes? When you got the flow of it, like it's a parking space. Oh, I ain't gonna park in the front because I know it ain't no parking space. Well, guess what? It ain't gonna be one. <laughs> <laughs> the parking space ain't gonna be there. But if you truly believe that parking space, your money will come just as easy, just like that. You, pay, you What's the process? Look, I heard it one day. His pastor was being um, Dollar was being um, interviewed by these some interviewer, and he says, "What's this prosperity ministry?" Prosperity. It ain't no such thing as prosperity ministry. If you let your money grow, it's going to prosper. Mm -hmm. Why you want to label him? So those things, at the end of the day, you look at these books T.D. Jakes writes. Read them. Look at these movies. Don't look at them and entertain yourself. Educate yourself. Mm. And those are the things that just help me throughout this whole, I ain't going to do all, just relax, sit back. And enjoy the ride. Thank you, Yeah, you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I would say uh personal development as well. The one pitfall I can think of just recently, because I didn't listen to my coach or a mentor. Uh I had lost uh Level 10 in Daisy, let's, let's say what it would cost to do level 10 in Daisy, doing a platform called All Bullish. And my wife said, did Rob will tell you to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. I didn't listen this time. So it, it, it gave me a kick in the pants and how to recover from that. So. That was one of the things that just, I don't know even what to say, what it did, but uh, I don't know, a bad feeling in your stomach, but it, it was, uh, it's, it's okay. You move past it and you learn from your mistake and you keep going forward and whatnot. And, and it, that's just it. Uh, I would say pitfalls would be, um, when a company would fail us, you know, we'd have a bunch of people because what well, something is very important in this industry is your name and your, not so much your reputation, but how people perceive you. And you want to protect that at all costs, you know? Um, and we would have so many people believe, you know, and just train them, build them up. And then a company would falter. So it would usually be the company letting me down from a personal standpoint if you're talking about failures um because i was always in for you know almost 40 years i've just been in and it would be a company let me down whether it would be through growth through uh scamming out scamming out is a new term to me from the crypto space you know uh but in any event the way we would overcome that is for me just not quit i'm like a shark I have to keep moving. Mm -hmm. I, can, I almost can't relate to people that quit. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I know it happens, but my bro, I, it doesn't register. Mm -hmm. Okay, you look like now in the crypto space, I used to lose people, now I lose money. Mm -hmm. And I still, but, but we make a lot of money too, mm -hmm. you know? 
I hate to keep bringing Brandy's name up. <laughs> but she doesn't know, she does not know the majority because when I talk to her about finances, sometimes she'll break down crying. So I can't tell her I just lost 20 in this or mm-hmm. because I'm winning in that. Right. So it you have to just keep going. Yes, sir. You know, for me, it's pretty simple. Don't say I, nothing about Brandy. Oh, Brandy. <laughs> Brandy, I already called the reception concierge for you. He's down in the basement with me, the janitor. <clears throat> but, you know, I, I tell people all the time, three lessons you can learn. One, the, whole, the biggest thing is professional development, right? Personal and professional. Reading is fundamental. Knowledge is power. But everybody says they want to get paid. But in order to get paid, you got to have passion, action, integrity, and determination. Without that, you ain't paid. They're gonna see right through you. And so when you take and follow the system, because we have so many people all the time, you're an example, right? You could have been Daisy level 10, but you didn't list the Rabu. So now you're saying, how do I make it up? Well, don't worry about it because half this room is the same way. And those listening, we find something and we say, Rabu, Craig, all of us, I got the next one. No, it's not a part of the system. Hold on, Sayad, and just let it go. It's going to come. But really, practice paid. Your passion will do it for you. The action you take today, not tomorrow, right? Your integrity goes a long way, and the determination will pay you millions and change the commas in your bank account. Ditto, 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 ditto. Attitude to overcome, reading, self-development, but understand there's always going to be the speed bumps of life, mm-hmm. and it may be a wall, mm-hmm. it's gonna, but you know what's always behind it is a person or people. People are going to let you down, okay, the ones you love, okay, so that's how the other thing is when it comes like lists of people, just go through your share with friends and family, get them out of the way. So I don't believe in the NFL club. The reason why I don't believe it, get through your people. And then when you talk to new strangers, you're going to grow your business fast. You will soar. Okay. So I kept hearing an NFL thing and that always drives me nuts. (laughs) But the other thing is besides it's attitude, the best attitude that you can develop for yourself will create your altitude. I like what you said on that. You know, it's everything. And then my big thing is we're all about our DNA, our decisions in action. And that's what fails a lot of people. They don't make a decision or maybe they do make a decision, but they don't put it in action because I'm results oriented. Once we get results, that's what it's about. You do it as a parent. Oh, here's, I love teaching this one. When people complain about anything, and I love to use ladies as examples, I go, quit being so microwave, let's get it right now. How long does it take? Do you love your child? What pain did you go through for nine months to have that child? Okay, you loved it in the beginning of the concept, but all the morning sickness and everything else and the weight gain and all this other stuff, and then what, you had that baby, and you would do anything for the rest of your life for that person. Okay, so with that, treat this business, patience, every step, but everyone wins here. That's UGI, UIGI. This was, <laughs> this was awesome. This was awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, with that, I guess we're finished here and thank move you. on with the next program. Thanks, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Wow, the house down. Has this been amazing or what? Good. Well, the next time I'm going to bring on, and Brandy, we got your back. We're going to jack your mother right on. Yeah. So, <laughs>
We all jump the chair. No. But this, this, this has been incredible. This has been incredible. So uh, we'll go to your seats. We've got some amazing stuff to share, like right now. And the next step I'm going to bring up, um, just an incredible, incredible guy. You know, we had a chance to meet. And we met, you know, through Facebook. And as I said yesterday, another person was a friend of mine was like, yo, that's my guy. If he's going to do anything, he's going to do things with me. And that guy's a good guy, too. But that's almost like the network marketing mentality. Nobody's anybody's guy. You know, we are our own people, correct? Nobody has a finger on anybody. You can't say, hey, well, they should join with me. People should and should all over themselves all the time, right? That's just not how it goes. And so this gentleman came on board, and he just started knocking things out the box. And I just started watching him. And I started watching his YouTube presence. And it was funny. I remember um, we first started Daisy, people putting up videos everywhere. And I had to reach out to him, like, yo, yo, pull that video down. I don't know if you remember. But other people, I had to run down and get the videos down. But I just watched his professionalism, his love for people, and making money. Yeah, I, whenever I think of him sometimes, I think of uh, Hollow Nights. You know, when the dad, like, <laughs> he has his own money. You know, and we both have a, you know, we both were, and I just watched him do some amazing things. But then we told me we work for Intercom. Intercom back in the day, I told Sherry, like, got it. Because they, they like the Marines. You can make it through them, you can do anything. Or the Air Force and Navy, you guys get it. But he's just a powerful gentleman. And he's responsible for sharing some of the things that we have. And today he has one, he just left Vegas, meeting with the owners of the company. Actually, they're about to zoom in right now so we can hear from them. Without further ado, let's get my man to the front of the stage, Mr. Quentin Bradford. Let's get big here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, um, man, I'm excited. I don't know about y'all. You know, I remember when I was really, really young, I used to have this real hustle mentality. I used to cut hair. I used to DJ. I used to sell this and sell that. And I always used to tell myself, and how do I get back to that same moment when I had that same kind of drive? And being in this space with you guys, that has come, that's come back. And that's why I work so hard now because the things that we do actually work. Um, but now um, I've got some guys here that I want you all to meet. Um, they have taken time away from their own conference to come in and speak to us just real shortly uh, about the new phase that we're going to introduce to you guys. And um, when I tell you the team over there has a passion for helping people, I've never seen a team go so far to help people like I've seen from these guys here. And so I'm just excited to be a part of what they're doing and to be able to share that and just know that what they're doing works 1000%. And let me tell you guys, you're gonna make a ton of money. <laughs> We're gonna make a lot of money in the process. We're gonna help a lot of people. So, um, so live right now, uh, we have, um, some guys, I'm going to introduce them, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Doug Kyle and his partner, Mr. Brendan Duff. Um, they are the, uh, the developers of a platform called Digibot. And you may have heard of it because it's been around for, I want to say, about five years. And when you've got something that's been around that long in the crypto space, they're doing something right. Because we see many that just pop up and six months later, they're gone or you know, so these guys are definitely doing some incredible things. I'm going to talk about what they do here in a little bit, a little bit after, but I want to bring these two guys on real quick, just so they can tell you a little bit about what they're doing and uh, what they have going on right now over, uh, over in Vegas, which I hate that I had to leave. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Doug Kyle, if you are there. Can you hear us, buddy? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, we can hear you. Yeah, so can we, we're trying to share the camera, but it looks like it's blocked. I don't know okay. if they can. I think we might. Say. There we go. There we go. There we are. Hey. <laughs> hey, so, uh, so you got, you got our uh, lead programmer with us today. You didn't get to meet Mr. Boss, brother. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Quentin's come down front yeah. today. <laughs> 
So then, yeah, you might as well. So guys, this, yeah. is, this is Doug, right? Doug, and, and I'm Brendan. That's Deb, and obviously a boss. De Doug and I are, are, are the developers or the designers and a boss and team, right? We have a team of 25 programmers that work for a boss that developed Digibot. And Deb is our really our all-star, the glue that keeps us all together and makes sure everybody's happy and uh, make sure everybody gets set up right and all that good stuff. We just, I guess we'll just kind of just be a quick, uh, who are we, what do we do, right? So I know yeah. you, we got a short short uh, bit of time here, but you know, Doug and I have been, both been trading over 20 years. We've traded Forex, futures, stocks, uh, not a lot of options. I've done some options, but we've traded a lot of stuff. And in the Forex world, we, we were able to uh, train thousands of people. We used to teach them and, and automate uh, indicators, strategies, different things like that. And, you know, we went, you know, Doug can tell you real quick what we went through, what kind of got us out of that space and uh, why we're in this space now. Yeah, you know, guys, the crypto market is is simply something that that is changing the world, and it's something that everybody needs to be involved in. It's probably the most exciting space for uh, our generation, or probably in history, right? Uh, for people to be able to make wealth. And so, with uh, Digibot, what we developed is an AI system that trades the market. Uh, we believe in trading every trade whenever possible back to profit. Basically, we don't leave trades negative and we trade them all back to profit. Uh, but we're also coming out with a new system called uh, Insights. It's for, for the DeFi reflection space. It's the space that, uh, you know, we're getting trades where we're making anywhere from 100 to thousand percent moves about that space guys simply because it just absolutely is life-changing when you're in a place where within minutes you can uh, you can turn that kind of percentage or within a few days so uh, the thing that we're really focused on in in what we develop is trying to create tools that trade the, the whole crypto environment that will actually help people create wealth and create, in some cases, what we call generational wealth. And uh, that generational wealth is being created every day in the crypto space. And we're here to take as big advantage of it as we possibly can. I don't know if I can share my screen or not, uh, Quentin. I don't know uh, if you're yes, still there, buddy. Yes, I believe you can. Hold on. Awesome. And what Doug's doing there, guys, you know, we'll just kind of, you know, you'll hear us bounce back and forth a little bit, and I'll just give you the difference. So Digibot is trading uh, more of the established uh, coins in crypto, like, you know, Bitcoin, the USD, uh, DT, cross pairs, e Ethereum, and uh, the, he mentioned Insights, and that's focused uh, primarily on the DeFi space. So we're kind of covering both those spaces, and he's going to share with you Digibot live, real money, Digibot results. Yeah, the... So I just ran this uh, this morning uh, for Quentin to send to you guys, but I'll show you what this what I'm showing you here. You can see that in the mode here, this is live trades. This is real trades. This year, I started it from the first of this year. Through Quentin, can you guys see my screen? Okay, brother. Uh, well, it's a little hard because we're far away, but that's fine. This is all recorded. As okay. Well. Yep. So okay, so so we ran it through uh, uh, today or this week, and this is the P and L here, guys. The profit. So <clears> and for, is for 2021, guys. Yeah, 2021. We could do it for 2022, 20 also. Same thing. Uh, but you can see the profit per trade four or five percent as I scroll down. You'll see no red. We don't. And I when I said we don't believe in trading. Tra closing trades negative. I really meant that we believe in the assets and we believe those assets are valuable and worth holding and we're trading uh, back to profit. But right down here, Brendan, you have to read that number. It's 100 and yeah, 105,872 trades. That's just in 2021 that, that are closed in, in profit, right? 
And guys, this is completely, these trades are 100% automated. It means you set it up and you don't touch it. Yeah. And, and it uses our, it's a proprietary system built on, uh, you know, the way that we analyze the volume in the market, the way we analyze the, what we would call whales or the larger traders and analyze what they're doing, where they're doing it and how we participate in that market movement. And we do what is called accumulation trading we try to accumulate coins uh in down moves and we try to accumulate them at correct places in the market uh and then close those back out in profit as the market re uh resurges back up and we could tell like I, we we hopped on a few minutes earlier we could tell you guys are all all builders and, and of kind of the same mindset right so in this space right we believe in accumulation right because we all want to accumulate that bitcoin is some of the other coins and that's that's what digibot does because we're, we're looking for that x factor right so as it's taking these trades if it's if it's a bitcoin cross right and made three four or five percent on that particular trade you're accumulating that much bitcoin that much bitcoin so we, you know we're all looking yeah. for it to, to blow up as yeah. we expect yeah yeah and i think for some of you guys that aren't in crypto yet you know you're looking at bitcoin and it's at sixty thousand dollars or sixty two thousand dollars yesterday and you think, well, you know, how high can it go? Well, there's a lot of major uh, analysts, including places like Citibank. Citibank's predicting over $100,000 this year. Uh, guys like Michael Saylor and stuff are predicting a million dollars plus by 2027. So the, the goal for us is very, very simple. Uh, we are accumulating coins that have significant upside growth potential. Plus, we're trying to accumulate the Bitcoin, get everybody a half, quarter, full Bitcoin, uh, multiple Bitcoins by the time it hits that million dollar mark so that we can help as many people as we can to reach that 500,000 to a million dollar plus uh, income position in the crypto space. And it's, it, it's going to happen. It's, it's, not, it's not one of those things that you, you think that, Okay, if I do X, Y, and Z, then maybe I can have results. That's not the that's not the case here. This is very unique. This is a market. Unless the government shut it down or unless something happens, these markets are going to move, and people are going to make fortunes over the next few years. Question is, is how do you participate in that, and and whether you participate with us or another way? This is absolutely a market that everybody on the planet should be involved in, but you guys are definitely focused in the right area to really say, okay, you are income oriented already. So you need to look at how to diversify that and, and you know, get involved in the crypto space so that you can make changes for your family. And I believe in a lot of ways, hedge what's happening economically around the world uh, through the crypto markets. And, and so that's what we're all about. Quentin, I take any questions you have, buddy? Real quick, let me just say, Quentin, hang on. I just got to say that I want everybody to understand this is set it and forget it technology. What you're looking at here with Digibot, especially, this is passive income. So you set it up. Digibot is doing all these trades for you in the background. You didn't even have to peek in at him. Um, it's a phenomenal program simple setup easy for everyone in the room i just wanted to make sure everybody understood that okay perfect perfect well um I don't think uh, I'm going to probably take a few questions here, but I'm going to let you guys go because I know you have the event going on there. I just want to just really take some time to thank you um, because you did not have to stop what you were doing for this. So I really, really appreciate you guys. I had a blast there meeting all you guys. I wish I could have stayed. Um, but we got to help some more people. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're, 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 we're going to get people set up today and we should see a nice, uh, a nice, um, spike in one of those green lines in the Digibyte enrollment. So, <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Thank you, buddy. Hey, Quinn, just for you, we hit a twenty-two million dollar market cap yesterday, buddy. Let's say it again. NSI. On NSI, twenty-two million. Oh wow! So I'll, I'll tell them about that too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. I appreciate you so much. Have hey, a good one. Bring them all back with you. All right, I'm back.
Well, yes, guys. So that is going to be the new platform. Uh, Digibot, as you can see, um, I think over the last year, year to date, over 180,000 winning trades. So when I tell you these guys know what they're doing, they know exactly what they're doing. Now, one thing that I do want to say is uh, I was just sitting thinking, and one of the things that I thought about is whatever you're thinking about maybe your next six months, your next year, think bigger and think faster. Because what you think is probably not possible, it's going to be very possible and even more than that. So think bigger, think faster. And I had to tell myself that because when I started to see the things that were happening and how fast it was happening, it was like, man, I didn't think that could happen. But if you think bigger and you think faster, you're going to be surprised at what can happen. So yes, um, Digibot, um, there's a couple of things I'm going to talk about about Digibot because it's not just about their trading platform. They also do have... Um, um, a catapult or what they call catapult exchange basically they have their own ex um, uh, token exchange and they also have uh, their own tokens so that's going to be something that we're going to i want to talk about a, just a little bit briefly as well okay ai powered fully automated crypto trading software trade with constantly improving software so just like how we have with royal q and copy pro traders um you're going to make control you're going to maintain control of your crypto at all times. Now, when I first came into crypto, of course, <laughs> and we've heard about a whole bunch of different programs, we were all just really gambling, right? We were putting our money in these things, hoping that they would pay off, sending our money somewhere, hoping they pay us the return that they say. But if there's one thing that I've learned is that there's no longevity in a platform like that. Why? Because if they're not doing some real type of trading, they can't withstand the dips in the market. The market dips or, you know, something happens and guess what? They can't pay you what they told you that they were going to pay you. So I told myself on behalf of all of the people that are following me, it's my duty to make sure that I'm putting people in programs that will work. And when you look at a, pro a platform like Digibot, if someone takes $5,000 of their money and they put it into an account and an emergency happens and they need their money, can they access it? Absolutely. Go into your exchange, withdraw your money and it's yours. This company will never touch your money, all right? Never withdraw it. They will only trade it for you, all right? Now, um, and it, they basically did the presentation. So um, as you can see right here, here's a screenshot. Uh, it's 105 thousand plus trades that are in profit this year and i want to say their averages is about three to seven percent per trade now they have this really cool feature which they call long-term hold so let's say they get into a trade and the market turns and that trade starts to lose well they move it into a position that they call long-term hold and they basically work that trade out of the loss back into profit before they close it, all right? So pretty cool. Now, the one thing that I do wanna say that I really, really like about this platform that's different from any of the other ones is when you set up this Digibot platform, they're gonna give you the option to trade USDT and they're gonna give you the option to trade Bitcoin. Now, me personally, and I'm not telling anybody what to do, I chose to trade only Bitcoin because I had platforms that were already trading USDT. Now, when you trade Bitcoin, and the reason why I like it is because Bitcoin is what we want, right? I mean, that's the that's the that's the king of all crypto. That's it has you know a very limited supply. You want to be able to figure a way to get as much of it as you can, right? Well, with their trading software, we can trade Bitcoin pairs and take those profits, and it moves it back into Bitcoin for you. So when you see that 5% or whatever, 2%, you're going to see that in Bitcoin and you're going to start to see the amount of Bitcoin that you have go up. It's about the amount of Bitcoin that's important, not necessarily just the value, how much of it do you have? All right. So that's the really cool, unique feature with it. Um, yeah. And we kind of already talked about this um, when we talk about volume. 
how much of it can we accumulate? That's what's going to be important because as you heard, what does he say? 2027, I think he said, a million dollar Bitcoin, right? I mean, what it's already done, I think it's done enough for me to believe that that's very possible. And by the end of this year, I mean, you know, they're talking a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Well, how much of it will you have at that time? That is the key. How much Bitcoin can you have? And then it just shows here, um, their software predicts, as, and it's kind of hard to see. I know you guys probably can't see it, but there's circles. There's these huge circles. And their software insights is able to see where the whales are, the people. And if you know what a whale is, a whale is a person who can really move the market. They, they have a large amount of crypto and they can move the market. This software can see where those wells are and then make predictions on what they're off of what they're doing. So really, really, I mean, high level, it's even, you know, like I said, I learn something every day, you know, in, in this space. And I love that. Um, so some of the technology that they have is, it may be a little bit over, you know, our heads just a little bit, but just know that it's working and you're going to be able to get to experience that. So um, this is one thing that I really wanted to talk about that's different from any platform that I've seen, as you saw, they took time out of their own conference to come on, on Zoom and share with us. But not only that, their, their support team is incredible. If there's someone that is new to crypto and they say, I wanna be in this platform, but I have no idea what I need to do. You can reach out to support, and I'm not telling everybody to do this, but you can reach out to support and they will literally schedule a Zoom call for you, get on Zoom with you and walk you through how to set the software up. Now, many of you are gonna already know because you've done Royal Q, you've done Copy Pro Traders and it works the same way. You're gonna connect your API keys, put your money in your exchange and then select the coins you wanna, the pair that you wanna trade and then just let it go. But for those who are new, they can reach out and these guys will literally walk you, just hold your hand and walk you through the setup process. They even have um, courses, trainings on Saturday that you can attend for free. I mean, things that would cost you money, these guys will do that stuff for you for free. And then they also have their Telegram groups and things like that where they post their information. Now, not only do these guys have you know, their own trading platform. Um, they also do have their own tokens. So, and I'm not telling people what to go out and buy, but we see a lot of, we see a lot of coins that hit the market, right? I mean, anyone can create a coin, but, and we see a lot of what they call these meme coins that just, they come up, they pump up to a higher price and then they, everyone sells off. And then the people who got in at the higher price end up losing all of their money right? Uh, we see that happen a lot, but these guys are developing tokens that have some real use, that have a real community behind them, and these coins have real value, and their goal is for people to be able to invest $500 with their coins and be able to make, you know, the large amounts of money, so not having to put a lot of money in to get a higher return, but, but, but to be able to take a small amount and be able to get a high return. And it's really cool because these guys have their own swap, catapult swap, where when they release a coin, they release the coin to their community first so that the small guy has a chance to get in at the very low price of that coin before it goes to your pancake swaps and all these other swaps where there's bots and things that buy the coin and run the coin price up. No, you'll actually have the chance to get these coins as soon as they're released at the lowest price. And what does that mean? That means if you're buying the coin at the lowest price, how can you lose? You know, you, the, the risk factor goes all the way down for you in something like this. So I'm super excited about this platform. Um, Rabu, um, I've even, I even have a special promo code for the group that's going to allow you to um, purchase and what, and they use what they call, um, it's, it's cards, right? You purchase this card and it has credits. So just think of it as, Hey, every time they make a trade for me, it's going to use a little bitty piece of those credits and 
that's how they make their money. They don't charge you some large fee to join the platform or, you know, you have to pay a fee on the amount of money that you put into your exchange. No, you'll simply buy one of those cards. It's, it's going to have credits on it. And when they trade for you, it's just going to use a little bit of those credits. And the most you can buy is a $500 card. And we have, uh, I think it's 35% off. So if you get that $500 card, you're going to be able to get 35% off. And I had that card, and I believe that card lasted me a little bit over three months. So a worth of trades. Oh, yeah. So uh, when I got into Digibot, and, you know, because me, I have to test things first. You know, I can't just put people in it. So I've run it now for about four months. And um, I started with $25,000 worth of Bitcoin. Not telling anybody that you have to do that, but I just did. I started with $25,000 worth of Bitcoin. Right now in my account, that, that Bitcoin has grown and it's, uh, it's at $45,000 right now. And that was, when I looked at that, that was about three months worth of trading. So they're, they've grown my Bitcoin not only have they grown it, Bitcoin has also increased. So you're winning two times there. You're, you're, you have more of the asset and then the asset is appreciating. So that's why I love this platform. And, um, and it's going to be great for the group. I, I, I just, I know that it's going to do a lot of great things. So, so yeah, Digibot. So don't sign up. Don't sign up because if, if you don't have that code, and you sign up, you won't be able to get that 35% off. So, and I believe that is going to be good until, the, what's today? I think the 18th. So I think you have two days. We're going to have two days with that code where you'll be able to get 35% off on that $500 card. So I think it comes out to 335 or something like that. And you can send in Bitcoin. You can send that payment in Bitcoin and it'll activate your account. If you do want to refer, now, this is, that you heard, passive. So if you just don't want to talk to people, hey, don't come in my face, you do not have to talk to anyone. But for those who want to share it with their team, and, and I don't have the exact numbers that was on there, I want to say, do you remember what I told you, Rob, we on it? Oh, my tablet for the percentages. Um, I think, I, I want to say, I think it's 12% level one, 23% level two, and then 4%, I believe, on level three. So you will have some incentive to share it, and it's all paid back to you in Bitcoin. So it's Bitcoin that goes in. When they make a payment to you, you get Bitcoin coming out. And you can turn around and put that Bitcoin right back into your trading account and let it keep working for you. So uh, really, really impressed with these guys. I love the team. You're going to love them as well. And I'm excited to bring this to the group and share it. So that's my time. Okay, how we doing? We good? All right, we have two more segments and then we're done for the day. But Digibot is going to be phenomenal. The best thing that I like about it, I meet people all the time and say, yeah, I love trading. I could trade, I could trade. I was like, good for you. I'm not trading any. I'm, well, 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 if it smell like work, if it look like work, if I'm not staying up, I'm not doing any by late nights. I'm not pushing any buttons. I'm not doing any of the above. That's why we find platforms that could do it for you. If you're skilled at it, Go at it. You could do that. I'm just going to go chill with my family and my friends and just hang out, literally, and make tons of money while they're doing it for me. Okay. It's called being ambitiously lazy these days. So, with that, I'm going to bring to the stage um, our good friends, Kaladi Jewelers. And they're going to chat with you about the ring, okay, about, you know, how it came about and things of that nature. And while we're excited to have this partnership with them as well. So, let's bring to the, bring to the stage my friend Ray Yu. Let's. And her sister. Early. Ah. Got it right. Thank you. So, hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to start off by saying um, I'm Ryut Kaladi. And, and I'm Orly Kaladi. Should we do our thing? And, and we're, we're the Kaladi so sisters. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much to Rabu and to Sherry and to all of you for giving us this opportunity. Just to give you guys a little bit of a background, um, Kaladi is not only our last name, but it's our family legacy, it's our heritage. Um, we're actually 
hundreds of years ago, there was a town in Iran called Kalat with one L. So our last name now is K-A-L-L-A-T-I. Um, and the town in Iran was called Kalat. And the king, this is going back to the year 1700, had won the jewels from all the wars. And this town had people in it that were known for their honesty and their loyalty. And so the Kaladis were the king's guardians of these treasures. And fast forward, uh, my father growing up in this hundreds of decades of later, uh, growing up with close ties to the kings were really royalty. And unfortunately, after the revolution, they went from riches to rags, literally. So that is how he grew up and watched his entire family lose everything overnight. And he vowed they had to flee Yvonne. They went to, to Israel. Um, and as a child, he vowed to build it back. And his father was sick. Um, he actually, growing up, waited until he got a visa, came to America, and built everything from scratch, the American dream story. And myself growing up, I'm the older sister, in case those of you are wondering if we're twins, I'm older, growing up. Um, I remember my father literally traveling the U.S. in a car with us. Sometimes we did not have a place to sleep, but I remember this growing up, uh, traveling the U.S., slowly and surely building up the empire and the brand that you see here today. And knowing that, we always stayed true to our values. We always stayed humble. And we were fortunate enough to have an opportunity to really create a brand story that has values. And it's so aligned with everything that I'm hearing today, to never give up, to believe in yourselves, and to stay true. And that is so hard to find today. So one of our brand ambassadors. My father is still very much involved. He actually manufactures all our jewelry. My sister and I design the jewelry. Fast forward another 30 years now in his generation, we are proud to say that we are an up and coming and successful jewelry brand nationwide, worldwide, both in retail stores and on cruise ships. One of our ambassadors who's actually part of UIGI during COVID said to me, Rayu, you have to meet Rabu. And I'm like, Rahu? He's like, you have to meet Rabu. And my name being a name that's always, you know, uh, Rayu is hard to remember. So I'm like, okay, what is this about? She's like, you have to meet them. I can't explain. It's too complicated, but this is a phenomenal person. And what he is doing is so aligned with your brand story. Because what we are doing and what we found our calling, my sister and I, we decided to brand. Beforehand, my father was just producing jewelry and selling to stores, and it wasn't branded. And when we realized the type of jewelry that he's creating, the craftsmanship, the value, we wanted to do more. And our calling in this world is to create jewelry pieces that empower you, that allow you to wear it, and that really remind you every day to live your legacy. So not only do you leave your legacy behind, our brand tagline is to live your legacy. And so we are creating pieces of jewelry that remind you to do that. So you can imagine when Rabu was speaking to me and telling me what these rings are for, and sitting here and listening to every single one of your stories, it's not just a piece of jewelry, it is a statement. When you put that ring on, you are saying, I did it, and so can you. You are saying, I am proud, I am proud of myself, I am proud of everything that I have achieved. It's a choice. And so I'm so proud to have this platform and to have this opportunity to create this piece of jewelry that has so much more meaning to it. And I really believe that it will empower you to continue to live your legacies. And so I hope that you all know that not only in this world that Rabu 
all the stories that you hear about him, but behind the scenes, when he was speaking with me, there was so much sketching. I mean, this was just a vision and I would speak with Sherry and I would draw a sketch and then I would speak with Rabu and they'd be like, mm, they need something a little bit more. It's gotta be a little bit more. There was so much detail and he is always fighting for you guys. And it is so true and authentic. Authentic. And that is why I'm so proud to be part of this groundbreaking, really phenomenal group of people. And I hope that we have so much more stories. And of course, part of what I promised Rabu is to give back to you. And so with every single one of you ring earners, you did receive a gift card. And for any future kind of purchases or needs that you have, you will always have a special place with Kaladi. Um, we are honored to be your authorized jewelers and we are honored to hear your successes. So I hope that you do live your legacies and I hope that you do and that you're as proud as I am to make that piece of jewelry. You should be just as proud to wear that piece of jewelry. And with anything else, we're just gonna pass it on to, the, to my sister since I tend to hog the spotlight. I think uh, you covered it all. Oh, As great. you can tell, she's uh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> she does most of the talking. <laughs> so thank you very much. And um, for all of you, again, congratulations and continue on living your legacies. Take care. <laughs> Phenomenal, phenomenal. Everybody having a good time? All right, let's give the ladies of Kalati a hand again. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, very quick, everybody stand up to your feet very quick. Stretch, reach out to the ceiling. Yes, stretch out, stretch out, get that blood flowing. Turn to your left. Your other left or your, your left. All right, squeeze in real quick. Put your hands on the shoulders of the person in front of you. Give them a quick massage, turn to you. Give them a quick massage. Real quick, real quick. All right. Now turn around to the other side, do the same thing. Give them a quick massage. Quick massage, not none of that cheap stuff. <laughs> All right, now let's look to the front, let's stretch. And repeat after me, I am. I am. Somebody. Somebody. That's it. All right. Give, give yourselves a hand. <laughs> I was trying to think of something real smooth to say, but I, I'm, I'm dehydrated too. So, <laughs> But in any event, ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinct pleasure to introduce someone uh, who's become an integral part of my life. I've actually wrapped my mission up into this individual's mission. This person knows 100% of the facts of what it takes to get us all the time freedom and financial freedom. How many people want to get both of those, right? He loves having fun. More importantly, he loves helping people reach their goals. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to your feet and help me introduce and bring to the front of the room the man of the hour, Mr. Rabu Gary. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. No, I don't. Ah. Oh. <laughs> How we doing? We good? Yeah. All right. So, as we close out today for the weekend, has this been a cool weekend or what? Yeah. This, this has been good. I mean, I learned a lot. You know, I learned a lot about who's in the room today. Learned a lot about you guys. Uh, learned a lot about what we're going to be doing in the near future. This, this is good. This is good. A um, couple little quick things. We're going to go a little bit over, not a lot over, because um, we had a little bit of, what do you call it? Um, we modified a couple of things. For those who are getting your professional commercial done, okay, um, Marissa is going to be available once we're done. She had to do a little breakdown or what have you. But then everybody else go hang out the pool. No, I'm joking. I'm going straight to the pool. No, but um, get your commercial done because you'll be able to use it for marketing. I just got the phone. I just was communicating with Russell Hayes, the gentleman who um, takes care of our promo pages. He's working with one of our servers right now. We got a little, the server got hacked, not us, but they're working on that. So that'll be rock and roll. It's ironic that, you know, Derek and Craig were talking about the system. Now we're working to get that fixed right now. So I'm excited about that. 
um, want to share some with you guys as we close out today and share a little bit of my, it's funny, last night we, had, we got into a conversation and I got a chance to share a little bit of it last night, but I want to share a little bit more of it with you now. Um, I push the button. So we've all heard about the one third rule, right? Yeah. Let's talk about the one third rule one more time. And, and here's the deal. The one third room is the foundation. Everybody say foundation. Foundation. It's not the law. It's the foundation. And the reason why I came up with it is because no matter what we were going to do, I don't want people in a position to lose. As much as I love the network marketing industry, you guys heard me talk about that. Um, my, my, my story was enough people weren't winning financially. Now, when people win in personal development, you better believe it. Well, they're winning, building um, strong relationships, you better believe it, okay? Traveling, you better believe it. But financially, enough for them winning. And so when we start playing with UIGI, UIGI, we start playing with this group, I said, we have to put something in place that's a fail safe. Because this is what's going to happen. It's not if a platform falls, it's when a platform falls. Everybody got that? <laughs> Now we want to pray and hope that you know they'll do their due diligence to be around for themselves because they have a best interest in, in, in themselves, they'll be around for us. But just in case something falls apart, we follow the one third rule. We diversify, we get these rings, we're gonna be all right. Does that make sense? And so I want to talk about the one third rule and get in detail about it because it's not surface. It can really put you in a position where this is what I did. I'm not telling you to do anything that we didn't do. And it was driving Sherry crazy in the beginning because with that little raggedy phase, you know, even though we like, it's like $600,000 stuck in there, literally, um, the money that came out, I was paying off debt at a rapid pace because I said to myself, if all of this falls apart, if all I got to do is get a job at McDonald's, we're going to be good. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? So I said, let's get rid of car notes. Let's get rid of house notes. I didn't care. I didn't care about anything else. I, I don't believe in putting monies in a savings account where you owe somebody debt with interest on top of it. That's stupid. See, I don't know about you, but I wasn't taught financial literacy as a child. My family didn't know about money, so I didn't know about money. It's just what it is. It's funny, you know, I was a social worker. Well, my grandmother was a social worker. My mom's a therapist. I followed in their footsteps until I hit Enterprise Rental Car and I learned more about sales, you know. But if, if, you, if, you're, if your lineage, if your parents, if the people you spend time with, if they don't know about money, what makes you think you know about money? People, people get this thing jacked up. And I watch people fail because they think they know what they don't know. And I was one of them. I have a mentor named Paul J. Meyer who's since gone. And Paul J. Meyer, out of the great state of Texas, actually Salado, Texas, um, died as a billionaire. And to this day, if you're from that township and you graduate high school, they still pay your way to college. That's the legacy he left behind, multi-billionaire. And I, and still today, I'm learning about money. Now, I have a mentor like I met in Rochelle, like they know about money, you know? And money's a big deal. I tell people all the time, I can't be a pastor, can't be a therapist, can't be a fitness instructor. You know, there's too many of us to all be best friends. But what I can show you is how to make some money and how to hold on to it. Because I've learned to do it through trial and error. Now, am I making Magic Johnson money right now? No. You know, or Warren Buffett money right now? No. But we're in a position right now, we probably never have to work another day in our life for anybody and leave a legacy. And we pay our taxes, <laughs> you know? So, so these, well, we got to pay taxes. So these are some important things I want to talk about. So the one thing, we're very, very important. Everybody repeat after me. Never play with any money you can't afford to lose. Don't. I had people come to me, somebody reached out to me recently. He's like, yo, man, I had this um, for your group. And, and my mentor, Holton Bug, said to me recently, he said, Rabu, you're making some money now. Everybody's going to want your money. And they're going to want your social network. 
So I had somebody reach out to me recently. He said, I know you guys have put money into things. He said, we have a program right now. We can lend them money. And so in 3%, we do hard money lending, so on and so forth. And I'm like, why am I going to tell my folks to get in the debt to go make money? When most people aren't responsible enough to get that big old loan and put it in. Now, some are, but most aren't. So I'm not going to set people up for failure. So if you're going to play in our arena, because we're not investors, we just play with money. We're a social club slash book club, Trace, okay? We just play with money. That's what we do, all right? But if you're going to play, don't play with anything you can't afford to lose. Number two, once you invest your money, I'll use invest for that, but once you put some principal into something, everybody say, forget about it. Yeah. Here's the thing why wise people lose. Your language and your mindset can destroy you in this arena. So I see people... Because all I had was a thousand to put in something. Man, I made 20 on my thousand so far. I made 500 on my thousand so far. I remember Marcus and I having a conversation. He'll tell you. He's like, man, I'm up so much. I said, don't ever say that again. You'll be broke as hell. Because he's concerned about how much up he is on what he initially put in. Remember that conversation? Because if your mindset is focused on being up, not focused on how this money can make money for you, you're taking steps backwards. You're not moving fast enough because money moves at lightning speed and you got to stay up with it. But if you're focusing on that little thousand that you put in, what about how close am I being and how, how fast it's going to take me to get the house money? That's all you're going to be thinking about is how fast it's going to take you to get the house money. You'll always be in just that phase. Does that make sense? So just don't think about it. Put that money in there. Forget about it. However, that money's going to start making money for you. My friend Clay says, Shay, Shay's like, I don't like that concept, but she loves Clay. He's like, his, his money makes babies for him, right? But your money will. <laughs> but Clay, my man, I wish him and Lisa was here right now. Another one of my mentors, super rich people. But what happens, once you put that money in, it's going to start making money for you. And there's nothing you can do to stop it especially if you diversify and get in different phases. It's gonna start making money for you. Now, this is where it's critical. If I put $1,000 in something and it does nothing but make me $30, I'm admin about this. If it makes me $30, I'm gonna take 10 off the top, knock away some debt. It's hard for me, I'm a get it done type of person, and Sherry will tell you, and anyone who's very close to me in my life, I just knock things out till they're done. Like Quentin says, he wonders how I do everything sometimes. I'm just on a key. I, I wake up with a to-do list every day and I'll shut out the world and just keep knocking things out, keep knocking things out, keep knocking things out. So something was important to me. I didn't want to have any debt. No, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to have debt to anybody. So I took that from that little raggedy phase, just kept dropping it in. I, it, it, there were $20,000, $30,000 days. I like, well, 10,000 going to debt. Going to somebody's debt, knocking off credit cards, knocking off houses, doing whatever we had, just going. Then that other 10%, I reinvest. I put it back into something that's going to produce me some money. Does that make sense? And I'm adamant about it. Just keep putting it back. Debt, you know, reinvest. Debt, reinvest. That last 10%, I have a CPA back in the room, and I'll tell you right now, he's not going to lose his license for nobody. You got some people do taxes, do all this little funky stuff, and you get these big old write-offs and giant refund checks and all this stuff. That's a matter of integrity. He's not going to lose his standing or his family or nobody. So you put some money aside to what? Pay your taxes. But that last third, you split it in half. You put aside to pay your taxes, and then you go play. Go spend you some damn money. Money has to flow throughout the economy. And there's some people who think their mindset is because they never had anything, they're holding on so tight. And they become Scrooge within themselves and don't even know it. They don't even know why they can't even make any more money. As blessed as we are to have money in our savings account, and I always have to really think about this, how I say this, so I don't block my blessings. But sometimes I look at that savings account, and I'm like, I've been wanting to kick it across the street because it's not doing anything for me. What happens when you put money in a position that's not doing anything for you, this is what happens to money. These are principles. It does this. You can feel happy and secure, and you can feel comfortable, or you can feel safe, 
because you have two or three month, two or three million dollars sitting in the bank account. Eventually, somebody's going to get sick. Family members going to have an emergency. You're going to want to do something. I'm telling you, that two or three million dollars going to just start doing this. It's, it's, it's the principles of money. If money stands still, it only goes backwards and never goes forward. It stays stagnant, it will eventually just drop. And you'll turn around and look like, what the heck happened? We hear the stories of people hitting the lottery all the time. The average person hits the lottery is in more debt than they were before they made the money. Kip said it earlier. You only make as much money as your mind can grow to. If your mind grows here and your money grows here, your money will find its way back to your mind. It always does. It's principles of money. And so play with some. Have some fun. All work and no play makes John a dull boy or what have you, or you know, Jane a dull girl. Play with some money. It's not going to kill you. And it's instant gratification. And sometimes it's fine to get some instant gratification. I'm not saying all the time, but you have to, you know, that, like I'm, I'm not a big TV person. I can't do the serious things. And I drive Sherry crazy. I watch sports and Skip and Shannon. Okay, that's all you getting out of me, all right? And some comedies. I need real time stuff. I can't do the, the binge watching. I don't knock anybody who do it. I can't do the reality TV. I watch sports and I watch regular talk about sports. Literally, and I watch comedy because that's some of the realest stuff you can get right now. And then I watch y'all on Facebook. Y'all are entertainment too. Good Lord. <laughs> Especially my little friends on Instagram, y'all really entertain me. And so, so with your time, with your mindset, with now this new, this is some new money for folks. My friend Holton Buzz, we were chatting. Sherry and I, we were, we were relocating in a couple of years. So we went down to a, you know, part of Florida and we saw this house. We saw these three houses. And one, we, we, the girls and I, Sherry and I, we fell in love with this house. And so we had a realtor drive all the way from Tampa to show us the house. House was incredible. Now we don't have a decent house right now. This house make my house look like the projects. It was incredible. So we're sitting there and we're thinking, and now we went to see another house that Sherry figured it was like a bachelor pad, but it was bad too. It was on the water. You wake up in the morning, your backyard, there are manatees and dolphins. Incredible. And I went to move there, had an elevator in it, everything. But Sherry and the girls, they gave it the veto. But I went to move there. So, so we go back, we get back in our resort where we were. We're so excited about this house we saw. We called the realtor the next day to have him drive another hour and a half to like, we're about to close the deal. While we're in the car, something told me to call my mentor, Mr. Holton Bucks. And I told him a little bit about the property. I'm excited, you know, so on and so forth. He said, Rabu, if you buy that house, don't ever speak to me again. Now, that house is $2.1 million. We're going to buy cash. In fact, if you buy that house, don't ever speak to me again. Because right now, he said, you're new money. And new money do emotional things. He said, what you're dealing with is emotions right now. He said, you don't even understand. He said, you don't even know you don't know. So I'm going to call him for a half an hour, 45 minutes, sharing the girls in there with the realtor. Now, I listen to my mentor, then he gets me on the phone with his mentor. His mentor, then they told me a story of, you know, and this is public. I, I don't know if they've ever told the story, so I won't say it. But they told me a story. His mentor told me a story through Holton how his mentor lost millions based on emotions. To, to become rich, wealthy, what have you, we have to have some emotional intelligence. We do. And sometimes, you know, it's funny what Tiffany said. She said, I don't know if I'm like, if he, he's like that with everybody. Yeah, I am. You know, some of y'all can attest to that. I love y'all all the same. You know what Sharon said, you know, it's, it's trial by, what do you say, Sharon? Trial, trial by fire or whatever, when you, when you work with me? Because... I need you to be strong. Now, I'm a live until I'm 200 years old. I'm just letting you guys know that now. That's one of my affirmations every day. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to be all y'all pallbearers. I'm going to be here for a long time. I'm, I'm going to be here. But, but before I leave this earth, I need y'all to be strong. And you can't drag people. You can't hold people. You just can't do it. 
or they can't go on their own. You know, so this, this is important. Now, this is just a foundation. It's just a foundation. You know, Stephen, I didn't know that, man, that all bullets thing was a couple of cats lost some money there, man. It's a couple of platforms that I've taken some licks for before we were just like Quentin said, look, I played with this thing for four months. I've taken some licks. I took a $50,000 lick just to see if it was going to be okay for y'all. She was like, what? I'm like, I am. We're okay. We started with $400. <laughs> That's always my answer. I said, well, we had $399. Then we were in trouble. I said, we're in profit mode. You know, <laughs> That's just was real. And so here's some things I want to chat with. I saw this recently, right? Wealth level by net worth. This is very interesting. If your net worth, I remember Sherry and I, we used to go to a church in Rawway called Agape. Pastor Powell, great big church, good, a mega church in New Jersey. And he brought in a gentleman who worked for Black Enterprise. And they did a big old conference on net worth. So they gave me a little pamphlet and everything. You went home and we started to type in our net worth and it was negative. Now at this point, I'm in network marketing. We had no assets. Our network, we had a car note, not a car. We had a mortgage, not a deed. We had, are you with me? We had a savings account, not real money. Our net worth was trash. Yet, we're traveling, teaching people about network marketing and following the dream, but our net worth was trash. It was zero. This is an interesting chart. If your net worth is under $500, uh, under 500000 you're pretty much classified as poor. Now, some people in this room will say, you know, I'm not poor, I'm comfortable. One of my good friends, his name is Algernon Hall, who's probably watching this. He said something the other day. He said, yo, man, I was, I was always stuck with being what I felt was comfortable. Here's the reality. If you're comfortable, you're right here, right? If you drop one little tiny notch, 1%, what does that make you? Uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Now, when it comes to growth, it's good to be uncomfortable. Muscle growth, mind growth, is good to be uncomfortable. But when it comes to finances, it's not good to be uncomfortable. But everybody said, I just want to be, people, I, I hear this, and I don't know where this came from, and I blocked this out. When I hear people talk like this, I'm like, eh, I just go the other way. When people say, oh, I just want to be comfortable, to be able to relax, and take care of this, maybe pay some bills, some bills. I don't want much. I'm like, I, I move away from them. Because they're about to get struck by like Because <laughs> the God I serve says you should be prosperous lest you can help other people. Being comfortable and cool, you can't even express yourself the way you want to express yourself if you're not rich. There are people counting on you. Literally, there are people watching you. And they're waiting to get some, get some courage through your story, through your, through, through your run. That's why I want everybody to give these testimonies. You have family members and friends who are going to watch your face. They're going to watch the whole four hours, trust me. They're like, yeah, I watched 20 minutes. Uh-huh. They're going to watch the whole four hours, and they're going to be moved by your story, your testimony. See, so here's the deal. This was pretty cool. Middle class, 500000 to $2 million. Upper middle class, $2 million to $4, four million. Here's the catcher. How many times have we heard this? I don't want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. Anybody ever heard that before? We were taught somewhere. I don't know who taught you this. I don't know where it came from, but it was like, you don't have any, you don't got a pot to piss in or whenever to throw it out. You talk about you don't want to be rich. You want to be wealthy. And you broke. And you're working on your way to be wealthy. Um, I don't know about y'all. I want to be super rich. Wealth is cool. 10 million to 30 million. That's comfortable. <laughs> but we could work our way on to being super rich. You know, in this crypto space, you're a wallet address. And sometimes an email. You're anonymous beyond belief. You're invisible. You could do whatever you want to do with some patience, determination, some true faith in yourself. You know, I forgot who it was. Um, I think it was Lawrence. Lawrence said yesterday, 
that it wasn't that people didn't believe in him, they didn't believe in themselves. You're going to find a lot of people, trust me, you're going to find people who are going to come out the woodwork right now. And they're going to want to join you in UIGI. There's, there's so, you ever heard the expression of safety in numbers? There is, in this instance, because we're all in the same direction. What would you hear a couple of times up here? Diversity, diversity, diversity. We all don't look the same. You know, the world, I love one of my uh, favorite authors, Dr. Um, Dr. Joy, literally she wrote the book, Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome, book I recommend for everybody. But we're not in a melting pot. We're big old salad. We got some tomatoes in here. We got some carrots in here. We got some lettuce. We got some cucumbers. And all of us together make a great salad. When we form something like UIGI, and while we're all different in our own right, but we're all focused on the same goal, that's helping a lot of people make money. See, you can't make money in UIGI without wanting to help somebody else make money. I know we'll hear from my good friend Bobby. Bobby's like, look, you know, I'm, he's, he's saying that he's not the most outgoing person, but he does work for other people. It's kind of hard for you to look at your bank account and look at your crypto account and see all of this money, but you got a cousin or a friend or somebody who broke. I can't do that. I don't know about you, I can't do that. I can't live a life of rugged individualism. I can't. You know, one of the highest value that lies in me is relationships. And you heard that from a lot of these top, you know, we listen to the OGs. You heard of relationships, 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 it's important. And so, I have, a, I have a goal, a major goal for UIGI. Will we crack 100,000? Yes, we will. We'll do that deliberately. I'm working on some things in the background right now just to bring more eyeballs to us. But as we're bringing more eyeballs, pay our taxes, pay our taxes, pay our taxes, pay our taxes. The crypto space is unregulated. It's unregulated. So there's really no rules yet, right? And so long as it says really no rules yet, that's fine. But I want us to always stay above board. I don't care what country you're from. Whatever goose that lays the golden egg that you got to pay so you can play, pay your taxes. Does that make sense? Have fun. Generally have fun. Kim said the best. It's, it's no, people worry about things. One of my mentors said it, and I heard Kim say it today indirectly. 90% of the things you worry about is never going to happen, ever. It happens with Sherry and I in our relationship. Sometimes she's, she's worried about something. And I was like, and, and it's not just Sherry and I, it's other people. I hear people worry about things. And then a little bit later, it never happens. If you put your mindset on worry, you will attract worry. If you put your mindset on one inch of fear, one inch of fear, one inch of fear, you'll attract fear. I fear no one. I fear nothing. I fear God, it's important. But I can't let, if I, if I know I'm gonna fulfill my mission and that's to help everyone around me become financially free, the moment I start to fear things, I let you down. Yeah, we'll take a hit, play with a platform and see if it's gonna work, you know? It is what it is. We'll take some arrows in our back. But once we've gotten through, find out that it's going to work, we don't we done utilize our resources. We got owners of companies on the live right now out of nowhere. Thank you, Clinton. We're going to do our due diligence because we're not making none of this stuff up. Something I'm going to say today, Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. I don't know if y'all looked today at your deal. They're 100% up. Uh, Daisy didn't start working right until March. Daisy didn't start working right until March. I'm going to say this again. Daisy didn't start working right until March. They're 104% up on your money. When the hell does that happen? That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. In March, We'll be in Dubai. Daisy has a convention, 28th to the 29th. Not a pay set event like we were just at. 
and Craig and you know and us and and we were at not not a pay event for all the top folks. Days is gonna be for everybody. Do everything you can to be in Dubai, March 28th and March 29th. Do everything you can. Trust me. I'm not an owner of Daisy at all. Integrity wise, I'm just highly connected. And before the story went out there, I was one of the first people to get the story out there. And I started getting calls from out the woodwork. My good friend, Adi, who's been a master in this industry. I could name people. There are people who are part of UIGI and these platforms that you know of, that you know, that you've that been your idols, your mentors, and so on and so forth. And they're UIGI keeping it quiet, rocking along, and making more money than you could possibly imagine. And if they can do it, I heard this a couple of times up, up here, you can do it. So in closing, this is the first time we're doing this. Next time is going to be around June. So get your calendars ready. Next one will be June. It'll be in June, it'll be in June, it'll be in June. I want it to be in March, but we can't conflict with Daisy. So it's going to be in June. I don't even know where we're going to be in June. Maybe we come back here, food expensive, food expensive, food expensive. Maybe we go somewhere else. <laughs> Man, we can afford it, but listen, whew. I had a slice of bread. <laughs> oh my God. But it is what it is. We're enjoying ourselves. But hey, um, pretty much in closing, um, you are unstoppable. You literally are unstoppable. And it's you, not your friends, not your mentors, not your surroundings, not your following. It's you who are the catalyst to help everybody else do well. And you have to believe that. I have some great mentors, I have some great friends, but at the end of the day, you know, even when it comes to being a, maybe the patriarch of my family, it's you that moves the needle. We'll work great together, but it's a whole bunch of us believing in themselves. And if you can do that, it's sky's the limit. So I said in closing a couple of times, really in closing now, y'all enjoy the rest of the weekend. Um, Marissa, as, as I mentioned, she wants to have it in this room. We're going to need to help get the step and repeat in here, guys, for those who can help us get in here. I know the engineers who put it together, they'll probably pull it down and get it in here so we can have it there. Oh, no, actually, she wants it here. So we could take pictures in front of Step Room P and get these videos done. Um, we'll break down in here in a little while. Me, I'm going to go beat some of y'all in uh, pup pup golf or miniature golf. I don't compete when it comes to relationships, when it comes to business. I don't believe in competition. Some I mean, of you've heard me say this before. You know, even friendly competition can spawn jealousy, even when you don't even know it. So I just don't believe in competition. But when it comes to sports and spades, I'm going to get some good ass kicking. Okay, oops. Excuse me. My mother-in-law's in the room. I apologize. <laughs> but when it comes to sports and spades, you're in trouble. But anything else, nah, we, we could. We, we chilling. We all on the same level. Right? But in sports and spades, we're not in the same level. I'm much better than you. Okay. <laughs> now, nah, but y'all enjoy the rest of your time. I'm glad this has been our first. This won't be our last, you know, as they should say in the network marketing conventions, let's take this home and show everybody what, what's happening. Well, they've been watching. Last night video got over a thousand plus hits and, and then Facebook shut it down because some music that we play. That's why you didn't hear music today. Cause I didn't want this one to be jeopardized being shut down. You know, I don't know how to do the on the rights thing but this one wasn't gonna get shut down. So, Hey, y'all, it's been a pleasure. Get some pictures. Oh, if you took any pictures with anybody in here with their rings, guys, tag each other and your pictures on a ring. Put hashtag UIGI Millionaire Ring. Hashtag UIGI Millionaire Ring and start tagging everybody. Take pictures with each other with the ring and let's start a frenzy on the internet. We'll do that together. All right? <laughs> No, no, and no. <laughs> well, y'all remember commercial back from BET? 
No, my brother, you got to get your own. <laughs> no. But hey, y'all, I love y'all. Y'all enjoy the time. God bless. Let's get this thing going. See you later. Oh, if y'all want to catch, don't kill each other by catching, but I'm just throwing. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you registered to have your commercial, if you registered to have your marketing commercial done, please come to the front room so we could just get a head count, please. If you registered to have your marketing commercial done, please come to the front room so we get a quick head count. Actually, if you registered to get your marketing commercial done, please come on the stage. Please, please step on the stage if you work. If you registered to get your marketing commercial done, so we can keep, keep, get a quick head count. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Melissa needs a head count so we can get you the right time a lot. That's 
Thank you. <laughs> Forgive me, you are doing your marketing commercial with Marissa. Please get on the stage real quick so we can get a head count. So, so, if Andre's gonna sign up, Don's gonna sign up, then see you. See something real quick. I was supposed to talk about a whole bunch of other stuff, and I didn't.